one and all to this week's episode of 10 o'clock i am your weirdly laboring voice guys you know galleon and this is your the back side of your vtuber experience murder dr lars no from the 70s has done warframe youtubing as well i did it first but he has done he's got an ember he doesn't use it much now he's got a cool duck Uh, face man he's got this cool unique custom duck persona which is just his own it's really cool but he just one well, thing i okay maybe i'm a bit of a snobbish elitist about it but i like mm. motion oh god my fingers are broke <laughs> wait those up Mo- motion yeah right you, you want you want motion okay <laughs> yeah I, I just feel it's more but, impressive I mean, it's just you know you gotta understand though that he is playing a game oh totally totally while, yeah yeah exactly you know, but so he's he's not gonna be able to go Woo! because his hands are supposed to be on the controls yeah 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 yeah. but th- there is if he, if he had a controller like if, if he had a controller it was just like so like, i'm yeah, gonna guess sorry. what you're doing but yeah um <laughs> but no no i know what you mean but then if i ever did stream i would use multiple i would switch between it so if you just did transition and then like bits where you're talking i'd go into like this and yeah. then when you're streaming, you swap on to the other model. That's be fair. I mean, I know the other model, really. But the thing is, though, it just annoys me when some of the other models, all they literally can do is this. I mean, okay, I don't have any facial animations. Fair. It's like, it's just up, down, bit of shoulder thing. And it's about this. Yeah, that's about it. I mean, I don't have any facial animation. It's all, maybe, maybe that's why. Maybe I'm just jealous yeah. of people with facial animation. Because if I did that, it would just be. <laughs> yeah, well. But it's cool. Right. Anyway. Okay, first things first, Amlums, hit the button. Oh, no. Okay. Yeah. No? Yeah. You don't, you don't want... There we go. Right, cool. So, I, I kind of want to claim victory on mine. Victory on nothing? Victory on nothing. No, uh, my, mine says, like, pleb lives matter, and it's someone holding a potato up. Potato? I don't even know what mine is. Yours wins. Uh, y- yours are... Uh, Potato. Empire. Yep. With some swords and some purple and some yellow and some blue ribbon. Oh, no. Sorry, that was... Ah, no, that's not... No, yours wins today. Yeah. I've gotten three... Three, three good emblems. Oh, okay. you cannot win. Res- <laughs> one of them, though. <laughs> right, okay. okay. Oh, that's not the one I wanted to use, actually. I was going to use one of the ones I had. Because I actually had to get it by jumping. I'm glad oh, I turned one. motion bluff. No, not that one. There was this, this Zephyr who was stuck in the air. And right. so I had to jump and print screen. Jump, print screen, jump, print screen. Wow. To get the arm. And it actually worked. But like it was just like, you, you watch it and you'll be like, see the Excalibur's like this, you know, mid-air <laughs> jumping. And it's just like, hmm. Yeah, but no, no. And there's one that you did. You there's one that you will just save that one for four hundred. Is it a JoJo's reference? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> but you will right. immediately because it's you. D- uh, it's a bit defeat. Damn, yes. I really want to get to four hundred now, but we've got twelve more episodes to go. Damn yes. it! Even though I imagine right. we'll have guests on, you were like, I'm overriding this. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, you wait. Right, okay. So, if you wish to win 75 Platinum for your platform of choice, go into the description below where you'll find links to the questions and Platinum giveaway for this episode. Go into so go to the Google form, fill it all in, and you'll automatically be entered. And in two weeks' time, you will have a chance of winning 75 Platinum for your platform of choice. And please make sure you spell your uh in-game name correctly because if you don't and de can't find it no one wins for that that week so uh, for that platform sorry <laughs> like all the, all the other three people don't win either no uh no one wins for that we uh, throw them all out you're punishing yeah. other people by your own ability to get your name right <laughs> yeah no not quite uh <laughs> right so do you want to turn off emblems and we'll move on to dojo dusting yes we should have like a thing Dojo Dust. Sections. Who knows? Who knows? Anyway, it's Dojo Dusting. What have we got on Dojo Dusting this week? Right. So I, I want to direct everyone 
right. to this magical thing I accidentally found mid last week. Okay. So I was I was watching uh, spring anime, sorry, top ten spring anime in a nutshell by Mother's Basement, right? And I accidentally clicked on the little small area below the tracker bar. And I discovered. Sorry, sorry, sorry can I just pause everyone? Because I, I was like, so let's just start with in YouTube. Apologies. <laughs> yes, in YouTube. Sorry, I thought that was a given, what with us being on YouTube right this very second. True, right. but I was like, you said some anime thing, and I was like, okay, maybe this is some oh, website yeah, or something. That might distract people. Fair. Yeah, so fair, while fair, on right. YouTube, you're watching so a right thing. Right now, <laughs> right now, right, in this episode of 10 o'clock, right now, right? Navigate to below the tracker bar between the timestamps and the controls on the right. I think it's over there yeah. for me, yeah? Over there? Uh, no. Uh, so that's that's where that? the timestamps are. That's where the controls are. Over right? there. So in between, there's going to be this big blank space that right now will say Dojo Dusting. Click on that space and a fecking... Oh, you have to be not full screen. Apologies, I forgot that part. But I, yeah. <laughs> anyway, sorry. But uh, you click on that, and then this chapter panel thing will appear to the right of us on the fucking... I'm like, why is this not there by default? If people do have problems finding it, we'll give you some... Uh, we'll probably talk about this next week, and we'll... I, pictures I'm, proving I'm, I'm, it exists. I'm just like, I was so blown away, because this is so <laughs> much better than going into the description and clicking on the sodding timestamps. Yes, right? but it is. Panel. Oh. It's not quite as efficient as the fact that the, the the progress bar has sections in it with the name titles, which is probably the most efficient method. True, but then allow me to click on the name title and go to the start of that section. Oh yeah, right. It's it's just like you know. Oh, but then they're afraid that it's just gonna take up space on oh what's the name of the damn thing on the right hand side where the recommended videos are fine then do it as a horizontal scroll bar only th i just like this is so goddamn stupid youtube <laughs> like mm. right okay uh so that's that's point one point two our winners for the platinum giveaway so we have stavev7 on pc no. um coven Ma coven Ma on playstation Ooh. la Husada Loka on Xbox and Tucker Wins on Switch. Tucker so, Wins! All right, wins. so uh, those names will be sent to DE imminently to for you to receive your platinum. Uh, I think that comes out on Tuesday, so the day after this episode goes live. But Zeno, and I wish to win platinum. How do I win platinum? I already did this. Do you want me to do it again? Yes. Okay, well, in the description below, there's a link to episode numbers, sorry, to, to the episode polls, along with the free platinum giveaway. Just go into the poll, fill out the poll, you know, what, you know, uh, God, how do I elaborate? Just fill it in. You don't have to do it completely, just, and you'll automatically be entered in for the platinum giveaway. And again, make sure you spell your name correctly, because if you do not spell your name correctly, there's a chance you will not win. Well, no one will win for that platform. It is a large form. It is over two pages, just to let you know. And there's a section on the first page about builds, which sadly I wasn't able to use this week because I was ill, so I just recorded what I could. There's a section about inputting builds for use in the recordings above. You don't have to do that. You can just fill in what you can, next page, and then fill it in. Yep. Mm -hmm. Good. Cool. And then our last, um, our last dojo dusting. So starting... The uh oh god, what what what's the the, the Monday of that? I think it's Monday the seventeenth of May. <laughs> uh, yep, yeah, Monday the seventeenth of May. Mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna start having guests on again, <laughs> and I've already got planned up until the thirtieth of July. <laughs> oh, so right. Uh, again, anyone that has any suggestions on who can be a guest, I, I have managed to successfully contact MC Gamer CZ, and he will be joining us. People wanted again. Zale from a while back. Remember, have you contacted Zale yet? I have not contacted Zale. Contact I will, Zale. I will, but um, thing we're is looking you, into things. You said you were going to July. Yeah, you've already done to July. Yeah, we'll, that'll be that'll good. Be August no, that'll be fine because that'll be post Tenocon. 
which will give him True. time to get out some funny lore video about whatever gets revealed at Tanocom, then we can discuss it. If if he's still doing it, because I think he's like he's just completely sworn off Warframe. Oh, right? really? Good say. Well, I mean, it's it's it's, it's I, I don't blame oh. him. No, 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 yeah. So, blame right. him. I blame him. I blame him. <laughs> anyway. Blame. Uh, next, we have the War Report. Yeah. Cool. Is there anything you want to... Yeah, I could I'd do bits from the War Report. So first of all, just to let everyone know, the 8th anniversary has started. We're, it's it's broken down into four weeks of rewards, just to, just to give an announcement to everyone. So first week is the Excalibur deck skin and the deck Cerberus and a weapon slot. Second week... That we would whip this will be that. over, yeah, yeah, just to let people know what they missed. Second week is Dex Noat, she signed Anna, so that's probably live now. Dex Dacro and weapon slot. Week three, the Lisette Dex skin, the Dex Ferris and weapon slot. Week four, Dex Rakasa armor, Excalibur Dex in action glyph. Hmm. And Excalibur Dex Noggle is week four. So, but also, the, the worrying thing is, let's say you are new to Warframe and you've missed that, all the rewards come back every year with the new reward yeah. in it. So, yeah. But that's just, yeah. you know, the thing. Uh, there's also a sale. On, I've got it on PlayStation, Xbox, and Nintendo Switch. I have all the dates here, but there's no point to doing them all. To say 50% on the Initiate Pack. I don't know, it made a thing on Warframe thing, so I thought let people know if they want to buy it. Have a look. If you're on console, it might be really cheap. Uh, and there's yeah. also... Oh, yes, on the new... I'm um, just from logging in. If you haven't logged in at the moment playing Warframe, because we do have some people who listen and don't... You know, They listen to us, but they're kind of like, I'm taking a break from Warframe. Log in yeah. at least to get the Excalibur Dex... Rhino Anniversary Dex. skin, yep. Rhino Dex. Yep. Rhino Dex? Rhino Dex. Rhino Dex. Rhino Dex. And yep. then da, 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 there is a competition running for the squad takedown contest, which is literally just get some friends together and take a print screen playing like one of Warframe bosses. Give it a go if you want. Oh, really? Check on the Warframe forms. Yeah, you can win a uh, Octavia Prime Access. Uh, Zephyr and Chroma, I think the. What's it called? Unvolting thing. That's coming soon. And yeah. then the lastly is you can now pre-order Tenocon digital packs. Yep. And merch packs. So, what did you think of that t-shirt? I don't know that t-shirt. I, I don't know about that t-shirt. I mean, yeah. I'll probably, I need to look at the merch bundle some more. I'll probably get it anyway, but I'm not 100% sure on whether or not. <sighs> Normally they have, they're kind of more subtle and more symbolic rather than just a picture of Warframe and some Warframes. Maybe they're trying something different this year to see if more people will pick it up. I don't know. Yeah, it's 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 mm, yeah. it's difficult to say. Like I, I think I mean one thing I have noticed mm. very recently is some of the t-shirts that I bought from for fans by fans, mm -hmm. they're they're starting to fall to pieces. Mm. And I'm like, I, I kind of wish that and, and that's the one thing that was really nice about the the, the Tenocon uh, t-shirts because they, they, they're they their symbol and everything. that That's been pristine for the year. Like I, the 2016 one I still use, hmm. right? That's still in perfect condition. Right. You've washed it you know? many times and no yeah. issue. But something that I've had only for like a couple of years that, you know, I bought in 2018. Uh, oh, it was, no, 2019. Hmm. It, it's just falling to pieces. I'm like, wow, that, that's kind of shocking. Very low quality. What can you expect? Mm, unfortunately. Mm. But yeah, so I'm interested to see this t shirt. I'll see what quality is like and things like that. And, you know, that'll probably make, influence my decision for future merch bundles uh, in the coming years. Mm. Cool. I Oh, there's one thing that you missed out with the, uh, the war report, which is the statistics thing. <sighs> <laughs> no, I just want to make sure people are aware of it. So there's you know, the thing right? on the f website. If you want to log into, you must be logged in, and it will mm -hmm. sort of pull some of the data from your account and put. Oh, I know, I know why you're bringing it. We'll get to that in just a sec. So there's a nice oh. little thing on the website, which is kind of like a supposed to be like a wayback machine, which tells you about some features about your account. Majority of it, I would say, you can easily get from just going for profile in game yeah. and seeing it so I, I wouldn't say a lot of it is impressive but it does have two interesting points one for xeno one is it actually gives you a breakdown of how much time you spent per mastery rank which is actually a really cool feature i thought so that's, mm. it's quite i think like almost a 20 percent of my time is on my current mastery rank and i looked at it and went 
Oh, really? I need to, yeah, I need to finish leveling up Master because I've just been up too lazy. But uh, the other feature is it lets you know when your account started. And Zeno would that's like to let people not, know because his not, is in 2012. And his no, is the same day as Hitsu's. <laughs> that's not what I care about. Actually, no, the thing I was really shocked by was the fact that Oberon and Oberon Prime don't count towards the same time, right? Oberon is still my first, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, top in the slot used Warframe. Mm. I'm like, but how? The Brack is still my most used secondary. I don't know the last time I picked it up. Years ago, maybe. Yeah. 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 So that, that was the thing that like, shocked me the most. But ah. anyway. Cool. So that's it for the war report. And now we're going to get do, do, into. Do, do, do. You're right there. Yeah. New theme song still. The topics. Oh, your theme song. Okay. Right. So, topics for this week. Our first topic is Is it really weird? I sorry. Is it re, sorry, Is it weird if I really enjoy Imperian? And number two, Severgoth's shadow is pretty damn janky slash floaty, and I kind of don't want to use it because of that. Okay. Okay. So topic number one. So the original post says. I've returned to Warframe for Ra Railjack 3.0. Is this a 3.0? Okay. I guess, now but like, it's more like topic. It's more two, and the first one was one and one point five because they didn't add any content with that one point. That this time last year, what patch? It was just fixing some numbers and and not even that Isn't much it? because the, two, the the one they released now did such a bigger overhaul of the weapons. It makes the one last year just seem pathetic, but they didn't even try almost. I don't mean that in a rude way, but it just, it just, it just, yeah, they completely rebalanced the weapons, the, the UIs, everything for this one. That that one last year just was. Yeah. This meal? No, just pointless. Well, just a, part, comparison. a part of me feels like saying that was the, the point oh five release. Yeah. And now we're finally on the point one release. Yeah, do you know, yeah, yeah. yeah point, no, you mean one point oh. Oh, uh, yes, yes, yes. We've right, gone backwards. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, sorry, my bad. Yeah, I do mean 1.0. Right, so... Uh, da, 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 da. Now that it is more solo-friendly with the new... Sorry, with NPC crew members, and I'm having a blast with it. Railjack controls very smoothly. Everything is responsive, and the space combat is ahead of uh, even games that put their entire focus on spaceship battles Rainier proxima all felt the same but corpus feels very diverse and has better game mode integration i did not touch void storms yet uh, which seems to be the main target of disappointment oh, okay. that's it. there's not much more in the actual topic um it's weird actually at the last point because I was going to kind of agree with them and because void storms now yeah I don't think they're the most efficient thing but and I I still think they should tweak the rewards a bit and maybe come up with the ability to either get double relics or pick more relics and get more rewards or something or pick maybe even just pick two from the end of if you've got multiple people or something but I don't know how that affects solo players so blah blah I'm not sure what the solution is it does feel a little bit more rewarding is needed but I enjoy it a lot more than just blitzing captures. Yeah. So I'm actually beginning to come around to it. Not not because it's efficient, and I think it's not... I don't think it's treating my time right, but I, for, maybe it's the novelty of it, but I'm... It's my new just, oh, I need to go... I don't know, I log on and just do it. Which is, yeah. it's been a while since something in Warframe has made me do it. I Like, liches. I have barely touched liches, even though they're, what, two years almost out old? I don't even know how old they are. I'm moving on to liches, corpus liches soon. I just mm. log on, and I look at them, and I'm like, I can't be bothered. <laughs> just can't get at it. Whereas I just log on, pop my railjack, do that. So, yeah, I, so that last point's weird, because I, I, I'm actually, yeah, I'm actually starting to enjoy it. Calling them Imperium's weird. That name's weird. <laughs> Yeah, I I very much like the changes to Railjack. I especially like the uh, movement changes. Yeah, can, like I, the, can I just can you can you explain that them to me? Because I, I maybe I'm just I just sort of 
mash buttons and sometimes it goes quick. How is it supposed to work now? What buttons are you supposed to be pushing for things? So they they simplified it where okay. you can double sprint. Right, okay. Ship is moving. Okay. And then I tap. Uh, you press sprint. Right, and it so goes into sprint like, mode. And it goes into sprint mode. Right. You tap and hold sprint. So like, you know, basically uh. double tap and hold to... Uh, go into turbo mode. Right. There's right. two speed, two extra speeds, right? Why and... if I just double tap and just sort of a boost, they get rid of that as well. The sort of the blink. That the the, the um the one second so, boost. That used to be a thing. I'm not quite sure what you mean by one second boost. I th I think you might mean like the so th there's loads of different things towards this. <laughs> First off, there is actually a blink. Right? right. If you have rank ten piloting, yes, you get a blink, which is double tap space. Space. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. I, I, to be honest, I feel so many of the controls are like, no, 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 no. You're binding too much to one button. Right? Yeah. You need to. So, like, I like the fact that it's double tap space because yes, you can hold space to go up, right? But I can also go up by pitching up and pressing forward. <laughs> I, I almost feel, I, I still, I feel that they need a, uh, maybe on the intrinsics page, a button that would load a tutorial video or would put you into a tutorial version of it so you can practice. Because I, I seriously, I just, I have rank 10 piloting and I'm like, button mashing, is it going quick yet? Yeah. Mm, yeah, there we go. Uh, the, the importance of the Plexus mods as well, because sometimes you might boost and you're like, I don't feel like I'm going much faster. That's because you need the Plexus mods. No, I got Plexus mods. That's fine. But uh, no, is, no, there, no. is there yeah. a charge bar anymore? Uh, a charge bar? Yeah, oh, you mean a fuel a sprint bar. bar. Yeah. No, they took that out. They took that out. Okay, right. They and can you out. shoot in all the modes? Um, I tried it the other day. Now you're supposed to be able to shoot at any point in time, but I swear I was double sprinting and I couldn't shoot. Hmm. So I was turboing and I couldn't. I couldn't shoot. But then I just kept on mashing it, and then eventually I did start shooting. I don't know. I really don't know. Just the, I, that's the thing. To me, I don't think it's very clear. It's not explained very well, and it feels but, a little janky. It's good. So, but it... so the, the, the important thing is, right, after you would do a turbo yeah. and you let go, you would just hurl yourself forward. Right. Right? No matter which direction you were turboing in. Right. right? So if you were strafing left or right and you were using turbo, when you let go of turbo, you would just hurl yourself forward. Right. Right. No matter what you were doing. And it was infuriating as hell. Oh, I'm going to turbo backwards and then just hurl myself forwards. Oh, I'll just the same place again. Great. Awesome. Um, but they've changed that now. So you actually turbo in the direction that you were going in. Right. Okay. Yeah. So that, that's like loads better. Hmm. Um and yeah, they they've just tried to dumb it down. Like they've also got key bindings. I don't know if that these were there initially, but they got key bindings. So you got like the the sprint and the turbo on separate keys and things. Mm. I'm also thinking if you turbo, you can not you have the option to not hold down the sprint button. I'm I'm not 100 percent sure on that one. But yeah, so the, the, it's it's a lot more. I want to say intuitive, but it, it does th it doesn't do things now that are just janky as hell. But it still has a learning curve. It still it says here though the railjack controls very smoothly, everything responsive, and the space combat is ahead of even games that put their entire focus on spaceship battles. I question that. <laughs> Oh, I, I don't know what games that they would be referring they, to. I checked the initial thing. They don't list any particular games as an example, so I'm not sure what they are referring to. But I mean, do, do I feel it, this is the groundbreaking for space combat? Not really. Well, it's functional. Say, and it's, this, feels this, is the same, this is the same space combat as games like Descent and Forsaken. But this is this is this is ground that is first tread in like the early two thousands. Yeah. That. Actually, when did Descent first come out? I think even actually older than early two thousands. I think this really like X Wing versus Tie Fighter does pretty much everything we. Well, I, my understanding with X Wing versus Tie Fighter is that you would you're constantly going forward. Mm, oh wow, ninety five. Really? Yeah, you could stop. 
You can you, stop and still stop. just spin around and shoot. Okay, fine. So, uh, wait, when was X Men versus Tie Fighter? I'm pretty sure older games covered the same thing. So, but the thing is, I don't, I don't feel. I yeah. Descent was first. <laughs> uh, I think that Descent, there's probably older games that space games do the thing. I really don't think yeah. the models change that much. But at the same time. I would say I don't I don't think that thing for I don't believe in that point they say that, that space combat is ahead of in games that put their entire focus on spaceship battles. The problem with Railjack space combat is the bigger spaceships are still static. Now at least with the corpus missions there's a reason for that because they're mission access points, right? But mm. at least at least at least now you attack turrets on them which feels slightly good. But the fact that those ships don't move means yeah. that Actual spaceship games, like let's say, you know, I can think of as let's say Wing Commander, where the capital ships can move. Hey, even yeah. X Wing versus Tie Fighter, the capital ships can move. They can blink. They can warp, teleport in hyperspace. and out. They can yeah, hyperspace in and out of the region. You know, so you could be doing a mission and oh no, the capital ship has appeared. Whoa! You just don't get that in this. In this, the capital ship is still a solid thing. It doesn't feel interesting at all until we can have moving capital ships that can engage and let's because that way you can have missions where there's a corpus ship in the middle which you're going to do a mission on but in the first let's say you know that first bit where it's normally like blow off two security nodes and kill two cruise ships yeah, yeah. you know that part of the mission yeah, yeah. if it was yeah. instead you know you warp in and lo you know thing he says to I says that but then all of a sudden warning Grenier <laughs> galleon uh, uh, and are they issues? I think translating in that you know appears and it's yeah. moving towards the corpus pillar that is a ship, yeah. <laughs> and you've got to attack its engines or attack its uh, gun port so that it doesn't destroy the corpus ship when it gets in range and that has a, and the corpus ship has a health bar. And it's like oh cool we're actually defending and you know the ship's moving. The corp the, the fact that capital ships are static just really ruins it for me, and it's it's quite sad that. that I don't. I don't want to have to go in them, but I want to actually see them move. And I do not know if that's possible. I also like. I. I really love to hear like this person say what games like they're, they're comparing this to. Are they saying like you know uh, uh, the the new oh god Star Wars Squadrons game, which I don't think either Loz or I have actually played at the moment. Do want to get it because it's VR compatible, but yeah, you know, I like. I, I really want to know what they're talking about because. I, I remember I used to play a lot of Freelancer. Yeah. Yeah. And again, that was a, a pure proper space sim. There was no running around the actual ship or anything like this. And you had to control so much more minutia about the ship. Like, you know, the, the la amount of power that goes into various systems and things. So like sad that, they that was, removed that for Warframe. Yeah. I would like, you know, I personally would love to see that level of control in <laughs> Warframe. I, I have a but, question for you. Sorry to interrupt you. You know all the different weird abilities that you can have, like tethers and shields and void mm -hmm. black holes. Do you feel you've got a good, good handle on those or that the game did a good job of explaining them to you? No, because I haven't put them on my bloody ship. Yeah, exactly, I, right? I haven't had the... In comparison, the the having a your ship have sh uh, guns on it and shields on it and having a, a system at the front which you change more power to shields, more power to weapons, is that hard to pick up? Depends on the integration. Uh, from think... the one we saw in Tanacon. Yes. They're like a triangle, remember? Yeah, I don't think the 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 one at Tanacon was the best integration. Because but it wasn't the worst the... either. No, it wasn't the worst. But see, that's my point, is that I think... The fact they ditched that and gave us all these stupid pointless abilities, which I've ne I've never used them. Never. I've never used one, and I feel that it, it seeing as the game's all focused on them about the tether ability or the weird void fronty shield thing or the, the the black hole weapon. I have no idea. And the game does not does not encourage you to look at them, does not tell you about them. You just get them and you're supposed to just understand what to do with them or maybe look it up on the wiki. And it's like, oh yeah, but we got rid of the whole more power to weapons, more power to shields. And we got that, which doesn't get explained, doesn't seem to be needed, and it's just there instead. And I'm, I'm, so, see, to me, that seems such a waste. I, it, that, that still annoys me. I enjoy so, Railjack, but I don't even touch those. Oof. So a part of me wants to, like, 
I, I would love that power system that they first teased. It's got more in. depth to the game than, oh, look, tether weapon blew everything up. But I think a large part of the problem is that the, the there's going to be... The, there's, there's a point of people can manipulate this in such a way to troll people. So imagine you're on a railjack. You're like, ah, more power to engines. I turn up and like, less power to engines. All right. No, 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 no. We want more power to engine. No, no less power to engines. You know, it, and I, I feel that there, there is that component that D didn't want to address. Look, if, if right? you're going to go to that extreme, then in a mobile yeah. defense, I can take the lunchbox and go hide in the corner. You now, can, there's now no way for you to complete your mission. I've never seen that happen ever. If you wanted to in a two-player game, I could never open a friendship door for you and laugh at you. I've never seen that happen. You know, there are ways that that can already happen in the game. And I've never seen them happen. I, I think that's a bit too extreme that people would... Maybe, maybe there'd be one after some people have a bit of a squabble in, which is like one in a million chance that two people have a squabble in Railjack chat and then one person decides to just sit by the engine, the, the device, and just keep changing all that to, I don't know, zero shields, maximum engines, zero weapons or something. I have no idea. But then you quit so, out of that mission, get into a new mission, they're gone, and there's no issue again. So what what I think would be a good method of addressing the... So uh, going back to your first two scenarios, no, I've never seen anyone yeah. just hog the... Mobile well, defense case, box. yeah. But I have seen people that join a mission instantly AFK, and then I can't open a friendship door. Yeah, but, then, they're, but they're not doing it intentionally. They're not intentionally AFKing. No, they're not intentionally. They just didn't. They're, they're, they're trying to AFK or maybe they, they, they load into a mission while they just quickly pop to the toilet or something. But they didn't intentionally load in the mission and go, ah, I will now keep you from opening that friendship door forever. No, <laughs> My trolling these, is complete. These were people that were gaining a benefit for not actually. Because you, you, this you're it with a separate. You're complacing this with a completely separate issue, which is AFK leeching. This isn't. This is your the the idea for the railjack is for when people are abusing the system to troll, not to intentionally leak. Don't don't well, okay, don't, don't separate into a separate thing. What if it's like no no I want more power on guns, but we're trying to go faster. No 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 I want more power on guns. No 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 no. We you make need, it like, the, then you make it that the person to. to Person of the guns has no control over it. It's it's as it was shown in in Tenocon, which was only the captain or the person in the cockpit could do it. So if you wanted to, you'd have to come out of your gun port, go to the bridge, swap it to guns, back to your gun port, get on your gun turret. So what I think would be the best solution, first off, put the engineering panel in the back of the ship. Right? Don't don't put it right behind yeah, the pilot. I, I agree, I agree. Right? Yeah. And I would make it that if no one was there, right, then, so imagine there you are, you're on the pilot seat, you press L at the moment, and I don't know what it is for controllers, but you press L and then the whole panel comes up with the, the ship and everything. At the same time, you have the, the levels for the, the triangle of power. <laughs> I'm gonna call it that. You have the triangle of power, and you can allocate the power as you see fit, right? If you're doing it from the pilot seat or the gunner seat, it is significantly, uh, like, it, it takes a moment, like a few seconds to build up to that level. Whereas if you're sat on the engineering seat, it's instant. No, right? I, no I, one can override you on the engineering seat. I would just make it that if you're not on the engineering seat, the only option is you can push a button and it goes back to default. I'm also fine with that. Uh, the if you're if you got if you haven't got someone on engineering or whatever and it's an NPC then you can control them through the NPC terminal and you suggest what it is and they work towards it. That's the only thing I would do. Yeah, I really don't think it's an issue and I think that there's more it would put more depth into the game if we had that rather than the I'm sorry <laughs> silly abilities. I've never have you, do you used them much? As I said, no. Yeah, don't install I them. Can't install them. That's yet. right. You said hey, you should be able to install them. No, because I haven't had enough space in my plexus. They don't. Just checking, okay. You do know there's tabs at the top, right? Yeah. And that they don't take the main capacity? I thought they did. They do. I thought they, they all uh, took from the capacity, which is like the whole complaint about you have to former up the plexus. 
Well, maybe, maybe. You know what? I'm probably wrong on it, so I don't know. I'm not going to put my foot in it. But I remember that I just went autofill and just took it out of the main one and stuck in different mods that I wanted. And then the other tabs were just full. So I'm not sure. Oh, I just assumed it did. Mm, it may do. I might be completely wrong and reading this wrong. So I just focus on the main page, as in literally I don't even bother with the other pages. I'm like, game, I don't need those abilities. You don't tell me about those abilities. You don't give me opportunities or reasons or missions that require those abilities. I'm just going to do it as normal. <laughs> really annoys me. <laughs> like the cloak, come on. If there was a reason to use the cloak, let's say that like... Spe <sighs> like... Just, oh. I, think, I think realistically, yes, there is reason to use the cloak and stuff. Things like... I mean, hell, I, I was doing... Was it with you the other day? We were playing Railjack. Yes, it was with you. And, oh, I have to go back to the Railjack because it's getting smashed, right? You know, if I could just go, ah, I have parked the Railjack, I've turned on the cloak, and now I can enter this capital ship without fear of it getting destroyed. That's the weakest reason to use the cloak. You might as well just have an invincibility shield when it's parked. Like, that's not well, thematically like, fun. Like, like, like how, about, how about, shield. how about, how about, how about? You know, yeah. the, you know, there's like the bonus objective, uh, on the, on the mission, which is like getting an asteroid or something, or go into a corpus mining ship or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. This is the side yeah. object. Don't do it. How yeah. about there's one of those that has a big bubble around it? And that if you approach, if you just go into that bubble, see, it's random which bubble you get. Maybe there's other ones for different abilities. If you, if you have the cloak, you can actually get past the bubble. But if you go in without the cloak, it just cancels the bonus ability. It's like, oh, no, you were detected. That facility's been locked down now. Potentially, I'm, yeah. I'm fine. I like the idea of abilities uh, for specific objectives, and that just means that everyone has to like. If there was an objective that required a specific ability, you can't tailor for every. But then people are just going to complain that they can't. Oh no! Uh, you you'd only put like three of them, um, so that everyone in theory people could equip for it or something, and it would just be a bonus objective. You, you know, most of the time, you most of the people don't even do the bonus objective. So useless. Do you know what I mean? It just, it just would feel more thematic that you use the ability to do something. Mm. Oh, and my other issue is, I'm sorry, because I can see, you, obviously you can't, but for me there's Grenier Galleons just outside the Lestat window. And I look at them and I'm like, it really annoys me that there's Galleon, or, you know, capital ship size, and I know there's several that are used. And then they're always static, and then you've got cruise ship fighter. Where's the midship? That you fight that does things that has multiple the turrets the, the frigate the destroyer the cruiser something something in between something <sighs> it just mm. that's this is what annoys me here is they say that oh it's great gameplay as good as space combat but no the, the actual capital ships are solid objects that don't do anything you don't interact with it they don't they're not active and then they never seem to put anything in that's substantial i mean i the i remember the idea i floated ages ago is why can't we have a I, I think I said Art Queen mission at the time which was cool but obviously we do it Railjack now which is you fly out into space in the middle of a solar rail crossover point and you camp down and what happens is it's it's a endless mission and every five minutes a new ship will turn up and you've got X time to uh, now obviously we can't go on to the I, I, I know there's limitations on the game so I'm not going to say go on to the ship and do stuff but still you had to defang it so you had to take out the turrets and the more you do the better the objective uh, you know, who cares I'm not putting out the complete rewards but let's say if you do the turrets you get this reward if you take out the turrets the engine um, you get this reward turrets engine shield grid you get this reward and that way then when it blinks off again depending on how much you've damaged the ship so it can go on and do things because it gets pulled out safely or whatever. You, 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 know, you don't have enough time to kill it, but you've got enough time to damage the ship. And then other ships might be cargo ships. So it's a bit of variation. You don't know what ship's coming next. And that ship, it's got massive cargo containers and you've got to break certain points to release the cargo. And then let's say it's got four different cargo points. You've got a couple of minutes to, you have to shoot certain sections and then other people have to do other things. And then the more cargo comes out, the more rewards you get. And then it blinks off again, you know. There's so much variation you could have on that, on ships that actually move. And they're obviously moving on the map tile as well. You know, there's an entry point and an exit point for them. And it's timed, maybe you only get two minutes to do it. Maybe some of them are shorter, some of them are longer. Maybe some of them are multiple ships, like multiple ships, those cargo ships turn up. And you've got three minutes you get as many cargo containers off as you can, and they move, and then they blink out. But they're big ships that move. <sighs> I think 
squad link would I mean, this might sound like a real random tangent but i think squad link would be a, a really good solution for a lot of this stuff uh, because you you could have it where there you are you're running your railjack your railjack has eight people on it yourself included mm -hmm. right and then you go right two of you go do this corpus tent trench run and your objective is to break some locks, right? On Arkwing. So they go off and they basically start the Corpus Trench run. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then, um, what's it called? Two other people can go do some other objectives, right? So basically, it squad links the whole thing together. So it feels like a larger global operation, right? Where the problem with the system as it is, I mean, it's still in its infancy, but I just don't feel. That without squad link, you can really do what you're proposing. Why? Well, I feel that, I mean, we already have people, that, that there's this divide between, oh, I want to just do the railjack side of things, and I just want to do the capital ship side of things. If if squad there is, in my in my example I gave there is no capital ship side of things. No 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 no. I'm saying that right now there's already this divide. Yeah. Oh. Right. Sorry. I assumed that your thing was based on what was already in. No, I, I took out the complete whole thing of you go on to the you ship the, in right, any way. Okay. It's entirely oh, space based. Okay. Right, entirely space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm down for that. I, I agree with you completely, though. If you were to add in any of the features like that existing in, yeah, you would, you would need squad link, and that's why I was, that's why I literally went, I gotta step away from that because I know it's gonna need squad link. You're completely right on that. Yeah, and you'd need right, those okay. things, but okay. that's why. I, and to be honest, I think that's what it needs, like because the only pure railjack mission that's for itself is blow up three corpus, sorry, cr grenier cruise ships and some fighters. That is apparently. The, the maximum <laughs> imagination I'm sorry, I don't even mean here, but it does have that apparently is the maximum Im um, imagination limitation of DE for here's a sp pure space mission. You blow up cruise ship and you blow up fighter. I That's do it. feel I do <laughs> feel that they need to Oh god, should we? <laughs> I don't know about you. What what arc wing do you take out in sorry? I always like, use Ojanata. All right, I, I feel and that... And people in the comments wings... tell me to use Amisha, and yes, I know I should. Right, well, I use the, the Itzel still, ah. right? And I find that the Itzel is just, like, squishy as hell. Yeah. Yeah? I, I just feel that if we want this sort of, like, dog-based fighting, like, this, this, this more Star Wars aesthetic to combat, space-based combat, which I'm totally down for, we need more than one Railjack, or we need what's the, what's the other uh, we need better arc wings uh, and we unique need things for the arc wings to be arc wing only things for them to do yeah I, oh god the... because you, you say about you i think you're saying dogfight combat there and to be honest i don't really ever dogfight combat because the arc wing is not meant for that it just doesn't work yeah it doesn't work yeah well i, I unless it's an amisha Right, I think Amisha yeah. is the only one that does work, but yeah, it's it just feels so. <clears throat> yeah. Yep. Right, I think we've covered everything on that. Should we have to replies? <laughs> on that note. Yeah, I kind of feel like what could we make better? I think realistically for me, I like better integration. I like the whole going on to ships and things, and I want the Grenier to have that. But yes, I oh, totally. That that, I feel they will. I, no, but I feel that that takes away from what you're saying in terms of space-based combat. I'm wondering if there should be missions where you can't get off the railjack. Yeah, I'd love that. That's, you see how you've come up with another core mission? Let's say we actually enter a dense, you could say like voice on pocket or, or ne some form of gaseous and small nebula is forming for a small period and that you have to do the entire mission from within the railjack, just it, it disable as a variation. Not as like, oh yeah, everyone's going to have to do 10 of these missions or whatever. No, it's, a, it's a, an, a, like an old alert. This mission must be done entirely from in the railjack and we have to just attack 
the nearby whatever that appears. You know. Oh, here's one, right? So they, they get the Orphix. So I, I feel like we, we've not... Right, okay, so more solutions. Here, they get like an Orphix, they soup it up, and they dump it out in space. So it's like a, a satellite, and the, the area that it covers is massive. So effectively, your operators have to pilot the Railjack, yep. destroy the, the Orphix with the Railjack before they can get back in their Warframes and thus use Arcwing again. That'd be cool. Yeah, that kind of thing. Yeah, and and no, we're not saying that should be. Oh, every mission's like that now, but as a no. variation it's on a the variation, existing mission, yeah. that's what you want. Variants, lots of variants. It's there, cool. but it just it's got to be used. Right, let's go to the replies. Yes. Only issue I have is that Corpus Railjack is far more interesting than Grenier Railjack. Both of are more fun than anything in non-Railjack game. Best part is that the new Voidstorm version of the Grenier missions give you a lot more mobs on the ground parts. Yeah, fair. I don't need to try one of those, actually. Oh, we never got around to trying them, do, did we? Do they? Because yeah. I thought... Uh, people that, were telling was... us that was the problem. Yeah, I was trying to get you... Yeah. yeah. I wonder if they've addressed that. Okay. As someone who played a ton of Guns of Icarus, I was really expecting something more along those lines when it came to play Railjack. But ultimately, I've slowly grown to like Railjack more and more as it's been polished up. Now the biggest vice... And I just note from I think I mean oh the, the biggest downside or disappointment when it comes to Railjack pulling us out of the Railjack lol. Oh sorry, sorry. Uh, now my biggest disappointment with it is Corpus Railjack pulling us out of the Railjack, lol. Eh. Oh yeah, okay, cool. So I yeah, so basically they don't like the fact that they go from Railjack missions to regular missions. Oh, well, yeah, I would say that the fact is that the silly thing is the Corpus missions never have a mission where they don't do that. Like, yeah. it'd be nice to shake it up if one of the nodes of the Corpus one was like the Grenier one, where you, you blink in, you only do a, you don't, the whole team doesn't have to go do objectives. You know, maybe one or two people do, and then you blow up some ships. It's the variation. I hate how they go, oh, everyone doesn't like Grenier Railjack, so we'll come up with these other missions where you have to do a mid-mission in between. Right, but the, the variation. I, I, I think Better. the problem. I think the problem is it's it's, it's right, down to spice of the life. engine. No, no, no. I think the engine just can't. So I mean, no, 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 no. You've confu I think you got confused again. It's what? nothing to do with the engine. In a Grenier mission, right? Yeah. The, the way okay, the the way Railjack works is it puts a space field in, right? Yeah. And then on the side has like a like when you're playing D and D, there's the main board which is the space mission. And you've got like these side boards, right? Mm. It has, I think. To one to three options for corpus cruise ship or sorry cruise ship sideboard uh, areas right mm -hmm. it then has one available slot for on space tile ground mission and now they've added a th an extra sub table that's over in the corner which is mm -hmm. the full warframe mission that you will have to go do right yeah now the grenier ones work entirely with space field cruise ship and asteroid as submission but they never used yeah. one in the corner all yeah. of the corpus ones go space field have access to cruise ships and they use it as, only as a side objective the what was asteroid for grenier side thing and then you always have to go from space field over to the corner separate table and back they never decide just to let you use the the objective of the mission is to go onto that tiny what is for the grenier the asteroid on the same tile mission right you always have to go completely counseling this table out to go into the corner onto that sub table I was telling you about and then come so back again. The the point I was trying to make is the Grenier setup I don't think is properly like the game engine is not designed to truly accommodate how to best utilize the, the Grenier method of doing a mission because like how many times have you gone on to one of these asteroids or one of these orbital platforms or whatever and there's no enemies to fight yes no that's true and that's what they're saying here is that's improved but you seem to have completely ignore the fact that the corpus missions do use the grenier mission every single time they you they're, they're they're loading an entire same as the grenier mission every time it's just yeah. what is the main objective on a grenier mission becomes a sub objective right so i uh... 
no, no, I, I haven't ignored this. I, I completely acknowledge this. Yeah. But but personally, I don't think they can make the Grinier stuff interesting without the addition of the this this extra table. Right, oh, extra... okay. No, 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 no. Yeah, you are right. The way right. the mobs spawn, that is always better with the extra table. But then you clearly haven't done many of the mobile defenses to gain access to the second table either, have you? On the corpus tiles. Yes, I have. But when they load drones and then they load mobs and then there's a decent amount of mobs. No, it, feel... no, no, it you works. Call that a decent, you call that a decent number of mobs. For, like, for, no, a, side, for a side mission that one of Forteno is supposed to be doing, yes. So there's one which is oh it was in the the Call of Tempestari which was the, yeah that's one of them yeah that's the you have to run down the the length of a ship sort of thing yeah it's the long the number of times ship. I do that and I see maybe one or two enemies right or there's the whole um, oh you've got to knock out this thing and they got disruption drones and I only ever see the disruption drones I never see the the actual proper enemies or anything like that. Well, I think a probably part of that was that the Call of Tempestari was making it super, 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 no, super no, easy not, mode. No, not in the Call of Tempestari. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, the there's, there's, two, there's one of those, which is this... Um, it's that, that sort of style thing where you defend a thing and there is the disruption drones on a this platform that looks like a mower factory. And now, now, I just want to say, yeah, you might only see three or four mobs and the disruption drones, right? But this yeah. is for one person that's supposed to be doing this. And if you expect to have, while you're doing one person, the same as a complete solo mission, or oh, unless I'm seeing 16 mobs at a time and more coming down the corridor, this is just rubbish. Yeah. I No, this is, this is why I feel that the, the missions realistically should focus on either space combat or a proper mix. Not, not, not this side objective stuff that the Corpus missions have, or the main objective is what the, the Grinia missions have. Mm. Yeah, I think pure space combat. And you could just say, like, oh, they've, yeah, you know, as we've said, they've put out a satellite orfix and, you know. No, no, I think that's good variety. But I think the, 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 the way they do the subject is fine. It's just they never really, if you say that then, what they should have on those things where the AI can't really, is limited to, let's say, the, the disruption of drones. And I've seen, I think about three mobs, let's say, yeah. They should make those three mobs bosses. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, that that I'd be down for. Yeah, that's like, the thing. <laughs> yeah, I'd be down for that. And then that would be a cool challenge if it limits one just person going in, and then one player has a no, not bullet, no, no more bullet. Flash me, flash me. <laughs> bullet sponges. And I'll be basting the boss. No. Okay. Okay, let's go to the next reply. Yeah. <laughs> I would enjoy the skirmish void storms if not for the visuals. They just give me a headache. I farmed the frame and the weapon, and I'm one neuro away from my, a second frame, even after the hotfixes. So I don't enjoy the storms and don't want to play them. Yeah, can they... I'm sorry. I, I, I know there's probably somebody who thought it was a really cool idea to that, that whole void effect thing. Give us a toggle and turn it off, please. Oh, it's on. So... It's off. In fact, maybe I can just replicate it. Uh, you see my camera? Right, okay, uh, yeah. Off. On. There, there we go. There, there we go. Right, okay. And it's off. It's on. It's off. It's on. It's off, it's on. It's off, on, off. On, off, on. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel... <laughs> I try, like, I don't think it should be on the camera because yeah. it's not on the... It should be on the Warframe, right? Mm. Like, mm. The, how often do we make reference to the radar that is in Zone of the Enders? Yes. More often than not. And I feel that there needs to be some sort of like, oh yeah, you can feel the in uh, say in uh, interference over in this direction. Like, just just have some kind of weird pattern effect go over your warframe, right? Ah, actually, there's a point. We've got the weird pattern effect. It happens on, oh god, uh, the void essence when you crack open a relic. Yeah, yeah, right. Have that effect. Change the color. I don't know. Make it blue. Make it red. Make it um, what's called customizable, depending on the player. So you know, oh, if I've got an edge lord thing and I've made uh, and the effect is black, I can't see it, right? You know, whatever. Make it so that the effect 
has a visual component on the warframe. So the closer you get to uh, this void storm thing, this this void rift pocket MacGuffin, mm. the more your warframe starts to glow. It's oh god, what was the name? Was it Sting in Lord of the Rings? The the blade that um, glowed if it got close to orcs. Orcs, yeah, yeah. yeah. Same no, visible. I'm with you. I I think that the reason why they put it as a sort of a filter almost at the HUD level is for yeah. consoles. Because it's an that way it's not a graphical it's not I don't think, I would assume, that it doesn't put a lot of load on the graphics, you know, it's not an additional graphics effect, it's literally just a filter that turns on and off onto the you know, as, as no, if I, just, I, I think I think this was a, a quick solution. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's, but it's it's that way. It's not putting any stress on anything. It's literally as if I just if I stood next to you playing Warframe and got a piece of cardboard and just poked holes in it and just went and just stood next to you when you were trying to play and just held it in front of your eyes every now and then. That's yeah. the that's the quality think... of this this piece. I just no, I, whoever maybe they were also worried that it was for what what is the point of it? Is it to try and telegraph that you're near one of these pocket void bomb things? Yeah. Because make I, it no, a sound no. effect. Telegraph, telegraph is not the the right uh, word. Indicator. Is, yeah, it's an indicator. An indicator, right? right. But yeah. I just oh no, sorry. Now because you said indicator, now my brain has clicked together why you meant the zone the enders radar thing because that would give you the same thing. That would telegraph. It. Yeah. Yeah. But th this, yeah, th it is not fit for purpose. It just, just take it out. Just take it out. I'm sorry. If I'm near one of these things and it goes off, I don't really mind if I take some damage. At, at <laughs> least, right, I think it should be a gradual fade in, fade out, depending I, on proximity. Yeah. Not, not this binary yes, no. It's not the, a keyboard, the right? The problem, I think, yeah. with that is we move so quickly that the... The range at which you'd have to start fading in would have to be like a tile in length. Uh, no, so I'm not. Uh, well, maybe. You know, it, it really depends. But you I mean, get like three or four per tile. Then it's just on permanently. Yeah, I don't. I don't think it needs to be a tile in length. Well, it's right? more because we can move so fast that I think that it would. It, even if because at first I thought that was the, the solution as well. I think we move so bloody fast. You'd move within proximity of one of these that the it would ramp up instantly and just feel the same, unless so you put the range as a big on distance. Duration as well. So like you know, if if the you're longer you stay near jumping, one, yeah. If you're bullet jumping, then you could. Like I suppose it's like expe uh, Oh god, intensity of exposure, right? So you have to like. Oh god, I, the only thing but I then, can think of but then they go is, off like landmines, so it'd be like, no, oh, I didn't, it didn't fully activate. So yeah, well, you weren't near it long enough for it to fully ramp up. Yeah. But then I got hit by the explosion. It didn't warn me, is what some people might well, whinge about. I mean, if, if the only way for that to happen is if you jumped right into it, and if yeah. you didn't see it as you were jumping into it, I mean, <laughs> can we just get rid of it, please? I don't, I don't, I don't know why they put that in. I just don't know. Are we talking about the voice songs? Or are we just talking about no the the, the visual effect? I like the idea yeah, of the I, bombs around the map or something like. Just make them big and obvious, don't... I think also to answer the question, okay, so what happens when you crack open uh, a relic mm -hmm. and you have the visual effect on your Warframe? Yeah, the... Then what about this effect? Well, this effect should take priority, right? Mm. This effect should... God, um... Override... You say that? Uh, but you only get the relic opening once per mission. So it's not that big a deal. No, once per wave. Uh, I mean, there's you, no... Do a, oh, is there, right, a, there is no endless. Now, no, right now there is no endless. But even If so, there was, you're planning yeah. ahead. Very good, very good. Yeah. I mean, if, if that's not good enough, do a... Sorry, I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> oh. Okay, sorry. Uh, if if um if if we want to do something else, and like you know, we've got ephemeras in the game now, right? Make a special non-user equipable ephemera mm -hmm. that effectively puts a stupid fecking cloud uh. over the user's head <laughs> to indicate they're in proximity of the. I mean, like Boy, no bonzo. one's gonna fucking miss that. Yeah, but I mean, it, it, do, do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean, bro? Do you know what I mean, bro? What I mean? Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I'm I, I, with think, you. I think at some point in time, you have to make a sacrifice of 
visual customization for the for the gameplay purposes mm. if it's if you have the mentality of oh no you can't you can't change the ephemera because that'll upset players you know well i mean it's the game mode that they're playing right what happens if you do a arcwing mission and oh i can't take my animal companion oh i'm upset oh well your animal companion would die surely you know at least out in the vacuum of space yeah it's just gonna suffocate so that that that's the the weird random out way i'm saying this i think make it an on warframe visual effect as opposed to a on hud visual effect agreed i think it'd be a much more interesting way of doing it and the last reply is, I hope some upcoming Imperium content is more focused on the Railjack itself, like Endless Skirmish or something. I think it's nice that the ground sections exist to, the tie, to tie the game together, but the option to play one or the other exclusively would be nice in my opinion. Yeah, see, this is, this is the, exactly what we're saying, because no. we were saying about this. No, that's what we were asking for. No, one or the other. Yeah, I know, but that's the thing. We already have the option to play the pure ground missions, right? That exists. Yeah. Right? There's yeah. a plethora of that in the game. Oh, sorry. I understand now. Yeah. Then there's the joint, which works as it is now, but there's like, where's the railjack, railjack content? I, I really don't know. I mean, I'd love to know, would people be genuinely interested in just an endless... You see, uh, yeah, skirmish mission on a rail. I think people would get bored because if you're not the pilot, I think that is one of the biggest flaws I, within the game system. Yes, yeah, no, I agree with you, and I think that's the biggest problem they had with Arcwing is that Arcwing has they just Love basically try to port game modes into space. Yeah, and then it's like right, and that should that should be fine. No, <laughs> you have to make it. Unique, like for instance, they did they did Arcwing interception, which sort of works, but it's just like okay, it's a bit. Basically, you just have to sit on the four points, and that's it. Mm. Then they tried Arcwing defense, but they didn't make it for the Arcwing thing. So what? What? How do you want to make it for the Arcwing? Well, it was supposed to be you're in a hangar bay defending ships. Well, if yeah. the ships came and went, and different ships turned up and different positions, that'd be cool. Instead, what did they do? Static object. Two. Sta they went. Oh, well, there's two things to defend, and they're just static bricks. Mm. And that was it. It was just like, just defend them against enemies coming out. It's like, just like, exactly the same as defense in normal missions where you defend a cryopod, it doesn't really move. Like, no, 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 no we're in a space hangar. It has to do things. If memory serves, there were uh, instances of the Arcwing defense where one of us wouldn't have anything to do because the, all the enemies were going to the other. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the, the, it, was, it, was, it was terrible. It was it was it was literally bare bones. They literally just made another box. Said that one part of the box is something you have to. That if it gets shot, you lose, and then just threw enemies in at you. Yeah. Like whereas if those corporate ships, like there was two hangers, what it should have been is that you start in one hangar with one ship, and then that left, and then a different ship turned up. Maybe two ships on the same hangar. Maybe two ships on separate hangars. Maybe you're in this hangar this time, and the next hangar it's the other hangar. Maybe three ships turn up. You know, it should be random. It should have been. Uh, See, I feel the biggest problem for Railjack is getting people to work together. With Arcwing, it allows people to just escape and do whatever the fuck they want and not support the Railjack. But without Arcwing, it just pigeonholes people into doing jobs that they necessarily don't want to do. Yes, that then incentivizes DE to fix those jobs, but at the same time, like, again, this is why I was so happy that the, God, the, the piloting lost the, the guns while they were sprinting. Because it's like, oh, yes, that means that other, um, what's it called, positions had something to do, you know? But it's just, no, pilot, that's it, pilot. It's all about the pilot. And that's the thing I really don't like. Yeah. It, this, this is why this is why the whole engineering side of things is really important. But then I'm taking it from the the point of privilege where I can form together a four man team real fucking easily, yeah. whereas there are some people that can't. Well, it's, it's, but but those people who can't uh, bring together at least now they have the option they can have NPC crewmen and they can assign the crewmen to do what they want and even skill them at what they're doing. Yeah. So they could just put someone on the pilot seat, 
and in the gunner seat and they just get to come around the rail jack and then just pop out and do the objectives they, they can do that now so i i really feel that fixed a massive gaping hole in the game sorry sorry can you just quickly repeat that the at least people now because yeah. you're saying about your ability to put together a four-man team like i can't yeah, 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 i can't yeah, click yeah. my fingers sad yeah. like there you go this is, at least now that they finally added in the NPC crew system, they can yeah. tailor their people to do what they want. If they don't want to fly the ship and they want to be a side gunner, they can assign someone to do that. If they want to mm. entirely NPC their crew, their ship, they can, and they can just do the one bit they want to do. Is so, that a good enough solution? Is it a functional solution? It's a functional solution, but is it Not a done. good enough solution? Well, what else do you want? Well, this is why I feel if we had uh, a maybe a survival mode, which is, hey, right. we're just dumping these Orphic satellites in there. You can't leave your railjack until you destroy the, the yep, Orphic but, satellite. Yeah, but but the your your problem was the fact that you can't. You're privileged because you can put you can pull the crew together really quickly. Now, yeah. people, even even a solo player could do that game mode you were just suggesting with three NPC crewmen because they can build whatever they want for their team. Yeah. So you, the point is not the internal ship things really anymore the problem is we need to give the external things something to do let's say as you're saying the the problem is that the pilot that can do everything you know it's, it's it's a very powerful slot on the ship right let's make a game mm -hmm. mode where the pilot has to keep the front of the ship pointed at a certain part of another ship it's following to uh, otherwise you fail the mission and it can't shoot its guns whereas the, that that leads it to the side guns everyone's on the ship by the way this is one of those cool missions let's say you're you're being stealthy and hiding in the backwash of a bigger ship or something and then thus the side guns the ones that have to keep off enemy ships or asteroids or something and so that the main the, the, the front of the ship the, the 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 driver is still doing something but it prevents them being the just the I do everything in win mode. You know, they they are they um, have another task to do. There's other tasks for them to do other than fly around and shoot things. Um, I wanna I wanna name something that's pure heresy. Escort missions? No. <laughs> have you have you, well? I mean, the, the the what I'm about to say could become in the form of escort missions. Uh, I've never played it, but this game is infamous. Superman sixty four. <laughs> you want to fly some, some rings, do you? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, that's that's the, what I'm going through. It's like, could 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 you not just fly through some rings? You could. Like, I mean, it's yeah. it's, it's it's so uh, it sounds small and lazy, but one that's mission far, where I, you yeah. had to do that, that's fine. That's fine. Just one mission where we have to do that, as in nodes or anything, and it's like a projected route, and you have to follow it. I mean, I just want I just want to clarify. No one's saying make it with the stupid time constraints the Superman 64 hit, which was stupid. Please don't make 60, Superman 64 in Warframe. But the concept of passing through rings, very, very time-worn concept. Yeah, could be done. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There, there, there are so many more options for space missions than yeah. Warframe tries. Warframe does not try to do space missions. Now, now maybe, maybe. Not That's yet, because they've been... Least. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. They've been focusing on optimizing Railjack, working on its integration, and I feel that, and, and also the crew systems, I think they've got those in a very good place right now. What uh, I think this is what Scott said in the Brosium interview. They want to get that foundation well-structured before they add more game modes in and do more things. The foundation is there. I, I'm actually really enjoying Railjack. I might even play some Railjack this afternoon and actually enjoy it just to do some relics. You know, so... The, the, you you and Nazif, I, I was privy to this, you no. and Nazif had a conversation recently about the whole star chart. Why are the star charts not on oh, top yeah. of each other, right? Yeah. Do you reckon with the way that they're integrating missions and so on and so forth between Railjack and regular missions, they could effectively do away with the normal star chart uh, and just have you on... The railjack star chart, and you can so if if oh, you, you can the, you just you do what you mean you do away with the railjack uh, jack star chart, and there is just one star chart. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and basically, if you want to go do a mobile defense mission, you start in with a brief railjack thing, and then you know. So basically, because Steve has always had this dream of never leaving the back of your warframe. Yes. Right? Could you, in theory, go, right, I will get on this railjack, which is heading towards this mission, get off, go do the, the mobile defense mission, either with them or without them, so like squad migration, 
and then after that you could go squad reintegration like you could go oh well i'm i'm taxi driver railjack i've done the railjack part i've dropped off the crew i'm now going to go pick up another crew at this other you, you know the, the exit point of their mission on this capture over there do, do you know what i'm saying yeah I mean, the game, the game is actually set up to allow, in normal missions, non-raid missions, five people. It is set up for that. Mm. So you could have a player do that kind of thing. Because, yeah, the, obviously at the moment we've got Railjack missions which go into normal missions, which go into ra- back into Railjack to finish off. It yeah. would be cool to have normal missions that start on a planet which go into a Railjack mission. Yeah. I don't think it would ever. It's, I still feel it would still be a bit janky, in some ways, the way it would work and things. And I don't think they're ever going to get to this super free flowing thing where you're feeling that seamless. It doesn't yeah. it? Doesn't doesn't? I don't oh. think it meshes a hundred percent. But the more options and variety and spice they add to it, the more it feels in that direction. Yeah, I mean they've done a pretty damn good job between Railjack and regular missions. Oh, well, the corpus side, at least. Yeah, okay, here's here's one thing alone that would improve this completely, and that's yeah. getting rid of the Lisset. <laughs> yeah, but then you lost all the customization. Yes, the, we've now gotten to the point that the glorious Lisset, as you can see behind me, has become a hub of everyone to think. But I think I think I actually saw this in a Mogamo video. Maybe change it to the option that people can spawn when they log in. They log in on their Railjack rather than the Lisset. I think, realistically... Lissettes should be individual and you can dock the Lissette with the rail jack. I mean, I don't care if it's a pocket dimension door where all the rail so Lissettes are on one sodding door, but you know, allowing us to come and go as we please, so on and so forth. No, I meant I meant no, you but you already have that kind of stuff. It's just you know, it's just permanently there. But you know, portal back there to your rail jack. But if you let people log into the game onto their rail jack it then gives it more immersion to the railjack. At the moment, the railjack still feels trapped in a content bubble because you start in the Lisette, as you can see around me, and then you have to go all the way down there or hit the navigation to go onto the railjack. If you want the railjack to feel seamlessly integrated, I should start there. I should have the option to just log into the game, I'm there. And I never leave there. Yeah. And the, I know this has been our home for so long and people make so many cool things about it, but that you, they need to start they need to let go of that a bit if they want the Railjack to become fully realized. Instead, we're st- oh, well, we can't get rid of this. Why? Because people have all their noggles everywhere. Got to have your noggles everywhere on your messy ship we've been trapped on for bloody years. No, no, you've got to get past that. Railjack, combat ship, no mess. Sorry. <laughs> well, right, a, part we- me, a part of me does wonder, like, should people be able to customize, sorry, decorate their Railjack like a Lissette? I mean, maybe you only have special dedicated areas that you can yeah. do it. But, okay, regardless, I think that's a rabbit hole that... No, I think, I think you said exactly the way to do it. It would be okay. limited with specific walls, specific sections, and specific, let's say, plinths for you to put things on. And it would be limited. Not let you put not the same system you've got in the set. But mm. let's move on. I think that was it for this topic. Uh, yep, that's it. And, right. yeah, I think we're really enjoying it. So let's finish off this. Right, okay. Topic two. Servagoth's shadow is pretty damn janky slash floaty, and I kind of don't want to use it because of that. Hmm. I'm not going to do the intro. I'm just going to skip to this. Yay. Right. The original post says, attack animations... I wasn't going to mention it. I thought we were just going to be professional and just go with it, but yeah, let's go with it. Okay, I'm not quite <laughs> sure if I'm gonna have to chop that out now. Anyway, attack animations break with attack speed. His two having so much inertia that it uh, just overshoots you and gets you stuck places. His two not hitting anything despite passing right through a bunch of enemies. Either a wacky hitbox on the melee combos or really low range on the claws themselves some jank with parkour animations whoa parkour what okay with parkour animations feeling rather sluggish i'm also tossing this here 
but his uh, Shadow One is pretty great ability. Actually, yes, the three is okay too um, for what it is. It's just the second ability that this person's having big issue. Yeah. Is is there much more detail on the uh, a little bit. So far, playing around with Mr. Edgy McKnifeface, I've been rather impressed with how he plays overall, but dear lord, the shadow form feels so rough to play as, and then so far I've got the point which the list you've just had there. You know, hits two, having so much inertia overshoots, you get stuck in places. Hit two, not have, not hitting anything despite passing through a bunch of enemies. You know, hitboxes, combos, animation speed, yeah, it's pretty much all there. Yeah. I... I'll, I'll be honest, I... When I was playing... So, Sevagoth in the Call of Tempestari. Yeah, the, yeah. The, the, I wasn't overly struck with his. I swear his second ability wasn't doing shit. <laughs> I. Do, do you know what I mean? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I mean, let's take that. Let's, let's, let's just separate this bit out here while talking about the shadow thing because the game does try and teach you about that in the Call of Tempestari quest with that music section. And it just mm. dumps you in that bit with it. You can die, but you respawn instantly. Don't really see damage numbers. And then there's just mobs around you that die and respawn or whatever. And then it just says mm. push one, two, and three, or you know, which is the default. And then you push these buttons and things happen. And you know, remember two just makes you go, Ugh. <laughs> and it's like, what? <laughs> what did I do? Did I? Is that the damage ability? Is that the? Is that debuffing? Did I miss? Did I what? The. <laughs> it just it feels so loose so loose you're loose like <laughs> it, it, it felt weird because his first ability is a pull yep and his second ability is a dash yeah like the only reason to have the dash is if you can't pull something but if you can't pull it why bother have the pull at all yeah no i get you on that it's so weird isn't it it's gonna take I... a sec you know we're really gonna you know because normally are so bad at remembering these things and i get it let's go let's have a go to... let's let's because maybe maybe we're missing something right let's mm -hmm. be good let's... abilities right uh shadow oh right okay Number one, brace, go see hands, pull enemy gin. Duration, eight seconds, range, 20 meters, 80% angle, pull angle. Nothing else to that, I don't think. Oh, no, it doesn't. Uh, no, nothing much more to that. Right, consume, dash through enemies, rip out their souls to heal the shadow. You lunge forward 14 meters towards the aiming reticle if cast with the target, or dashes through a target's enemy within range by extending 25 energy. On contact with the target energy, consume are in the highest. Yeah, consume inflicts 2,500 radiation damage and knock down while healing the shadow's health pool by 25% of the damage dealt. Target soul is also ejected skyward. Body suffers confusion for some seconds. Hmm. Where are you reading this? Uh, so you go to the wiki, you go abilities, you go shadow, and then click on the little arrow below uh, okay. So while right. Gloom is active and the shadow remains in range, consume damage to further heals the shadow. While several Goth is being at tombstone, his summon clone altered to cast cast from the quick melee fire weapons. Uh, yeah, that's about it. And three, inflict nearby enemies with a harrowing condition. Indeed. Yep. So. You, now that's why we just checked it. Just in case we're missing something, because I do... We, we, we're terrible for... Ah, what you actually realise is that this ability puts stacking targeted debuffs on the thing, and that if you hit seven enemies within a 10 meter range, they then coalesce into a fusion bomb, and it blows up everything within a 50 meter range or something like that, you know what I mean? Mm. There doesn't seem to be anything like that. Ooh, um, oop, yeah. 
I mean, as a, as a playing with the ability, I have found it very loose. It just, but the, actually, let's expand this as well. I feel this is a bigger issue with the game and dash like abilities because Excalibur slash dash, which actually does do a bit of homing as well, it also feels the same these days. It's so useless. It just doesn't. There's interesting. I don't think it says anything about the width of it here. It just says it. Sorry, where was it again? Lunges horizontally towards the aiming reticle. It doesn't it doesn't seem to be anything about the width. Damage and steel, range affected by ability range. Now it doesn't say if that's range is in the distance or the range of the ability. That's the thing with slash dash is that's how it used to work, and then it, uh, they butchered it. The only other ones I can think of are Rhino's tackle thing, and then Hydroid's wave surge, tidal surge thing. Do do people use these? I'd be curious to know if anyone playing those these four frames is there. Any, I might have missed one. I don't know if there's another frame with a charge dash type ability. Uh, I guess. Is he, Gauss is Gauss is sort of until it hits a wall. No, he doesn't really count either. Yeah, so I just feel these abilities are kind of redundant now, and that they're all about moving a large distance, going whoosh. But you, you move quicker and easier thanks to parkour that I don't think these abilities fulfill their role as much as they used to. Yeah, I mean, I feel the same way with Wormhole. I mm. feel like there's... In a similar way, I mean, yeah. it, it's, it's just like... Is there a utility aspect to this, of these abilities that could be introduced into the game? Like, you know bullet jumping through a wormhole causes a black hole you know and it just sucks in enemies and you know they don't come out or what have you i i i just don't but i mean you could have this ability without the dash you see yeah and would it would it be worse or would it be better because of it it would just do a straight line that's exactly the same thing but you just don't move from a to b and I feel that it used to be moving your character from A to B through whatever method, like say wormhole or whatever, that used to be a really cool thing because it was really useful to be able to have such freedom, such removability. But parkour mm. 2.0 broke all the shackles. And so an ability which moves the character really, even if it moved you all the way across a map on the planes of Eidolon, I mean, yeah, maybe those ones have some uses. But in general play, abilities that move you are just annoying more than anything. Yeah, I'm I'm wondering if what could happen is they keep the dash, but instead they just instead of doing something slight, you, you basically you grab the enemies and you drag them with you. Like and effectively replace embrace and well basically merge embrace and consume into one ability. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then you freed up a slot for something else entirely. So you'd like, yeah, you're still dashing, but you're grabbing the enemies and dragging them with you. And then when you stop, you can then just start slashing them to bits. Isn't that what Hydroids one does, though? Hydroids one push them along? Uh, potentially, yeah. But I mean... No, you're, uh, if, but you're, you're, really, you're not just talking push them along a bit. You mean literally sort of gathers them all into a big pile. Yeah, 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 it's like, uh, you know, oh, what's his name? Nidus's Lava. Yeah. Yeah, so you know how that, like, literally pulls everything together? It's effectively mm. that. You've grabbed everything, you're dragging them, uh, so you've dragged them with you, you've dumped them into a big pile, and then you just like, oh, now I will just consume you, I will eat you. <laughs> you know? And may maybe that's something. Maybe, like, consume could be... So embrace could be this dash with the grab, and then you murder everything. And consume is you just consume the corpses of everything that's dead around you, and you heal yourself. Yeah, and it's got a very small range that you want to only do that either when you've killed a big enemy or or when you've actually brought them all together. Yeah, yeah, you you heal for a percentage of the total uh, maximum life points of all the enemies that are dead around you. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, I. It's the, I don't. Yeah, I mean you, that way you've kept the dashing component, and then you've made that one next one more use to get you know what you want directly for it. Because I feel yeah. yeah that seeing as consume with dashing is the one about getting life. It's 
trying to dash over multiple mobs to get your health back is, especially if you want to go back and forward, just so fiddly. Yeah. Yeah. I think dash, the, 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 I think they need to review of the concept of dashing in this game well. Maybe if they always yeah. made, maybe if there was any dash ability could go through barriers as well without triggering them might be a useful thing. Because I know, because to be honest, it's 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 even redundant these days because you've got the bloody operate. <laughs> but allowing dash dash rhino thing, hydroids whatever to allow you to pass through, you know, the grenier thingy shields and the corpus trip shield tri trip lasers, as if you weren't there, would be decent. You could say that you're you're in that moment you're surrounded by void energy. You're basically invisible. At least then they would have a separate purpose. Yeah, because. I, I, I mean, it's hard to say because you, you, you play Oberon. <laughs> Feet are firmly planted upon the floor, not moving. <laughs> uh, yeah, I wish. Well, I meant, you know, you, your character isn't, is not a movement Warframe, is it? But, like, any Warframe that does have movement-esque stuff, it just... Like, Slash Dash used to be... I mean, we've got that way back thing at the moment telling you all your past stuff about your thing. If it, if it, <laughs> if, if the game asked me in the first year or two what was the most usability, it'd be Slash Dash. Slash, yeah. dash, slash dash, slash dash, slash I used to love it. It was amazing. And then they changed it so it ping pongs between points, and I have used it probably less than 20 times in the last four years. It's just so useless these days. It's just, I try and use it, and I'm like, but I could have shot things five times as quickly as this. Mm. Like, I'm going to go over there, and then I'm going to go... Over it, and then I'm gonna. No. In that time, you're 10 miles away. It's so bad. But I think that's the other thing. The other thing about being very floaty, and the thing about the range, is maybe that it doesn't do a good job of the side range of the ability, which is probably a problem. Yeah. But that's about it. Yeah. So. I. I'm I'm just wondering, are there any other Warframe abilities, like movement esque abilities? Like, a part of me feels that Warframe abilities these days are really focused heavily on maximizing damage output, not really focused on utility. Yes, I mean, yeah. I mean, the people that play Wisp. Right, I I see people play Wisp a lot, but the abilities that are used for Wisp are her reservoirs, yeah, and I think whatever her explodey thing on the reservoirs is. But apart from mm. that, like I never see anyone use the 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 sun cannon, mm. right? And I never see anyone do the dash, mm. right? I don't I think the dash is quite subtle, so it might be hard to to catch. Yeah. But really, it's just the bloody reservoirs, because the reservoirs are so powerful as fuck. Yep. Right? And they're a utility thing. Yeah. You know, um Oh god, let's have a look at the Wait, do you say that people don't use abilities for utility or do use them for No, no, I they 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 do use them for utility. Like No no I'm no no, you meant overall for Warframes utility. or Wisp. Um, I can't remember what you said before you started talking about Wisp. I, I feel that utility-based abilities have a lot more value. A lot more value, yeah, 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 yeah. Damage dealing abilities because, you know, hell, putting down whirlwinds as a Zephyr, you could just ignore them. Yeah, right? I, I keep trying down. to get into Protea, and yeah. I'm like, turret! Turret! Dead. It's like... Dead. I could have. It just. It just like they last for two seconds. They yeah. go pew pew pew, and it just feels really weak. Whereas the dispenser. Oh, I'm doing a, a mobile defense. A, so defense for people. We'll put down the dispenser. There we go. And if I ever get in trouble, I can rewind time really easily. But the whole grenade yeah. fan and turret. Like I could just shoot people. Yeah, it's quicker. I, that's, 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 I can do it at longer I range. I really want to know. Are there just some weird quirks to these abilities that just make them OP as fuck? Or are they just naff? 
we, it's more that I think that the amount of the problem the, the problem is you're bringing so many damage sources into a mission primary yeah. or secondary your melee your arc gun your necromech your operator your pet the, your, other your abilities which is the only thing I don't think I'm missing that list. what was it when you mentioned sorry other players oh other players yeah and then your abilities if I've got all these different methods of producing damage my abilities, which is, uh, you know, it's, it's a tricky balance. I just feel at the moment abilities are, yeah, I know that there's going to be some crazy ability that either Saren does or Equinox, which is like super meta damage, whatever. But for most Warframes, the damage is going to be like, well, I could cast this ability, which will do an arc cone of this, da 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 But in that time, my Kuva Nucor just wiped out three map tiles. <laughs> it's like, what's the point of them? So, but abilities which produce things weapons can't, like there's no gun in the game which spawns ammo boxes <laughs> or there's no gun in the game which buffs other players. So mm. the Wisp producing the totems and your Protea with the dispenser, you know, they're producing things which your guns can't. So that's why they're so brilliant. You know, they're so useful, so wanted. Again, like Warframe's like uh, Aniros, where Aniros just goes, ah, oh, I'm now going to give myself more armor than the sun. Yep. Like, again, really useful. Uh, uh, Warframes, like Harrow, oh, I'm going to make everyone invulnerable, mm -hmm. right? And give everyone damage buffs, yeah. Yeah, but... Yeah, Harrow's the one I think that does it, where the damage abilities are normally buffs. They're not. I yeah. know, and the, the, the first ability, which is, I think, the only one which is direct damage, also chains people to the floor, which is a CC practical ability. The problem is, like, coming up with decent CC or too much CC, and, I mean, what can you do? You can debuff the enemy, including CC it, and you can buff the players, including CC, but, you know, DCCing or, or giving them stuff. So it just needs to be more things. Maybe a Warframe which did things to the environment actually made physical objects that people can climb upon and things. You know, maybe that's something different. I'd love to hear from our community. Like, please tell us what we're not understanding yeah, because... Sorry, oh, yeah. You know, I, I just feel that there are so many things that we're not... I mean, hell, I finally got to understand how Garuda works. Yep. You know, and it, it's like, yeah, she, she's kind of fun. Not my main go-to in terms of Warframes, but still. Anyway, uh, should we go straight to the replies? Yeah, sure. I feel the same way, which is a shame, because I love Edgy McKnight's look and design, but damn, he is janky to play. At this point, I'm forcing myself to play him just because I want to like him. Shadows Wands is still fun, though. That's the pull, yeah. Yep. Honestly, his Shadows 2 is the most annoying thing in the entire kit. Its range is pitiful if you're actually trying to target something, but you will get launched three times the distance to the enemy if, there are one inch out if they are one inch out of range. Yeah, see, it's, it's a... Right. Thank you, Matt. He needs more windows where he can jump, cancel out of swings. He needs the hitbox fixed on his claw swings because they hit farther sideways than they do forwards. His jump slashes are also extremely inconsistent too. Uh, yeah, I've been testing him non-stop since his release, and the best way to play his shadow in its current state, in my opinion, is to cast Gloom in a good spot in the area Go into shadow form and spam embrace and kill those ragdolled enemies with heavy attacks. He's pretty effective there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've ever played the game called Risk of Rain 2, but in there, there's a robot character named Mul T who has a similar problem. All characters in the game have the same basement seed, but Mul T is bigger and has a wider field of view than the other characters, so he feels slower. Ah, they're saying it's a perception issue. I mm. haven't played. Um, Played that much on Sevgoth, I'll have to give it another go, but I'm not sure if that is, but yeah. Interesting. Interesting. I will have to give it a more go. If you've had some go, a go with Sevgoth and some interesting th uh, points you want to raise about it, please let us know uh, in by writing in the description of this video, and we will uh, read it and get back to it maybe next week. I think maybe I'll, I've got some. Have you got Sevgoth? Yeah, I do. Right. I think maybe we'll, we'll have another go ourselves, and we'll see you for next week. If you guys know, then let us know. Right, okay, should we go on to the graphs now? Yeah, sure. Okay, so... That was actually surprisingly quite a short... It was, I... because it's just like this ability, this one ability is kind of floaty, so that's why I was trying to expand it into like talking about other movement abilities and things. 
Yeah, another Warframes. It was another Warframes, like, wow. like your one with Nova, very good one. Yeah, I mean, we spent 20 minutes on that. I know. <laughs> it's like, what have I shown the top <laughs> When I saw, well, that's the thing, that's why I was talking quite a lot on the first one, because I know that that topic was not going to be very long. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, I, I kind of expected it to go into, like, more detail. No, it's just jank. It's jank. It's just so jank. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Cool. Let's do the graphs. Let's do the graphs. I don't have... There we go. They're in front of me now. So, graphs from last week. Uh, our first graph of last week. How do you feel about the Call of Tempestari quest? Right. Uh, we had 5% say negative, 18% said neutral, 14% oops, 14% said that they haven't played it, 18% said neutral, and 40 sorry, 64% said positive. Hey. Yep, I yeah, mean, I, I have some I, I have some heavy criticisms, but overall, especially remember when we consider putting it in the context of the production time, I'm very positive yeah, about it. Fine. Yeah, okay. I concur. Many concur. Right. <laughs> the second graph, hit the button, good man, is in the future, would you rather a short quest like oh. Call of Tempestari? What? It's not in order for me. Okay, yeah, I got, I got you. Cool. In the future, would you like a short quest... Would you rather a short quest like Call of Tempestari or a cinematic cutscene like Chimera's prologue? Right? 9% said the cinematic cutscene and 91% said short quests. Nice. Yep. I'm totally I, with that. Yeah. 100%. Like, literally, I think you could um, chop out the, the Call of Tempestari stuff to make a 30 second, one minute long video about it where you just see Vala, the Tempestari, her ship gets hit by the void thing, she wakes up with Granum. Yeah. You could do that, and it would be pointless. The Call of Tempestari, for what it was, was good. Yeah. Right, next one. Uh, do you feel that there's too much visual noise for the void storms? 23% said that they hadn't played yet them yet. 27% said no, and 50% said yes. All right. Uh, one thing I really uh, want to highlight, it turns out if you go into your options, you can actually modify the intensity of the the effect on your HUD by uh, with a slider. I'm like, but why would I have to turn down everything else just for this one annoying effect? So is like, it in a slider which does other things as well? Thing. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Like either give it a separate slider or change the freaking thing like we said earlier. Yeah. Or which graph was that? Uh that was the oh the yeah, the one you're on right now. Number okay, so three. three. So so number four. four. Right. Um on average, how do you run void storm missions? 14% said with pubbies, 14% said in a like pre-made group either a partial or full right um 32 percent said that they hadn't played them yet and 41 percent said solo mm. that's kind of surprising i mean i could play them solo obviously yeah that, that's what the crew lets you do which is cool it's so freeing that it lets you do that yeah but i generally play with puppies I know that they're also kind of rubbish, but literally, I find that puppies. Do you know? Actually, sorry, the NPCs are equally as the you know the NPCs are equal are, are as good as, if not better, in competency than I find for the average puppy. And I don't really mean wow. it in a mean way because I could yeah, but most of the time I find that I like play with with puppies and they just go on the guns and I'm like, right, I'll I'll go do the objective then, guys. Yeah. I'll, I'll crack this relic for us. You guys just shoot those ships. Yep. Yeah. It's it's fine. It's fine. I'll I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> just, and then at the end of missions, people are like, "Yay, we did it!" And I'm like, "What? what do you mean we? <laughs> what do you mean we?" <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then the next one. Yep. The Ooh. last one, number five, is. Do you like the sound of Loz and Zeno's idea of more relic rewards for personal negative modifiers? 5% said no, and I hope they commented why. I think it was 
JJ24 that said it, and it was like uh, too complex or too personally tricky or fiddly or whatever. Yeah, and ninety five percent. Sorry, yeah, ninety five percent said yes. Yeah. So, yeah, I I can I can appreciate the fiddly nature of it, but I mean, considering parkour two point I mean, there's plenty of fiddly things about Warframe. Yeah. Right. So that's it for the graphs, mm -hmm. and now we're going to move on to the supporter questions. Yes. Okay. Ready? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Big Beard Bear 93. How many goths could Severgoth goth if Severgoth could goth goth? Three. Very good. Minjisku, how would you like to see an endless mission implemented to Railjack? I mean, beyond, beyond defense. Is this too late? No, it's not too late. At all. I... And defense would be meh. No, I, I would like it so that it's kind of like the Orphix Venom uh, mini event where basically you've got satellites that appear out in a region of space and like maybe call this like a test area. So, oh no, the sentients are testing out these new Orphix satellites, right? You go out there and you have to prove to the uh, sentients that these are shit satellites and you start destroying them. Yeah, no, well, right. I wouldn't say that... You could say that they're, they're using these to mask their transmissions, and so we have to take them down to try and figure out where their actual missions or whatever are taking place. Clearly a man that can think on the spot better than I can. Yeah. So... <laughs> <laughs> I like the fact he's like, the said he's like, we're going to put our stuff over here, and you're like, well, I'm going to smash your stuff. Let me prove it then. Oh, and then hey, I will. <laughs> hey, 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 if it works for... Alad V to say like, "Hey, oh. come destroy our stuff." Oh. Like, yeah. okay. oh, my brain still doesn't understand disruption. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so plot of these, so they set up these satellites, which means that when your railjack flies, the the railjack is perfectly fine. Yeah, because you're not transferring into the railjack; you're still transferring into your warframes, which basically means as soon as the railjack hits the transference field, oh. bam you're kicked out of your Warframe and you have to operate the Railjack as your... So it's, a, it's a double whammy. Not only can you not get out to do Arcwing stuff, you also have to only use operators on the ship. Or you could use Necromax. Okay. Yes, yes, yeah. yeah. Cool. So if you get boarded, you get your Necromech out, you go smash, smash. Or, hey, maybe give us some operator guns and shit. But the is, is that you crying or laughing? I didn't quite get why you're shit. <laughs> well, no, no, no. I mean, it's Poor just like come on, expand shit. the neck. Like, so yeah, I was like, the... I didn't know if it was like it was just exasperated at the concept of the idea you were talking about, or the fact they were like, God, give us some more stuff. I couldn't tell which way around it was. Oh no, it's like come on, you've you you've, you've called us. Uh, oh god, Moadib from the oh, Dune series. <sighs> like, can we finally get like a bloody sonic knife or some shit come on you are aware anyway. the uh, sonic things are just in that one well film sort of they're in the game franchise as well yeah read the book um, I, I, Loz, the book I'm okay the, okay right i'm I, not I, as cultured as you can, can i just tell you how cool the book is the way it works right so yeah, sure. in the book, they don't have the sonic weapons, right? They also have personal energy shields that would that are so good they will they will stop bullets instantly, right? But yeah. they have laser weapons, but you can't use the laser weapons against shields because it would basically be a nuclear explosion, right? So nobody, it's sort of like a um, a uh, what's the word? Balance of scale issue. So no one will do this, right? So, yeah. but the energy shields. Are all, if I swung a hammer at you really fast, the uh, the shield would stop it. So they have an entire method of fighting with like knives, right? So they have to they have to charge at each other with knives. They've all, everyone's got the personal shields, and it's about you have to move slow to get through the shield and then attack them. So it's all a complicated dance of moving fast and slow to pass through the shield and then killing them. So it and they're all skilled at this weird combat fighting style because of that. It's so cool. Uh, and now we have another session of uh, Loz is going to pimp Frank Herbert's Dune. Just the first book. Just the first, <laughs> Just the first book. 
don't yeah. read anymore. Okay, but even even Just so, don't. like. Yeah, but even so, like they, they they hinted heavily, like, oh yeah, you're gonna get operator like weapons, and you know you're gonna be like really cool. I, like, I was remember the other day. I remember when we had Megan on, and she promised aging operators, yeah, and we're like, oh, wow, announced yeah. here first, never happened. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oof. Right. Check. Uh, what? Well, well, oh, uh, yeah. So you you basically have to use your operator to destroy these satellites and. Yeah, so that, yep. that, that's, that's and I, I, I earlier put in my concept about the whole shipping lane thing or or void our solar rail po- a crossover crossover connection point where ships keep coming in and going and you have to keep yeah doing different things which would be endless and obviously the longer you stay there the but the more defense. the enemies no it's not defense oh, okay. <laughs> no that's the thing I don't want to I don't you don't want to label it no I don't want to take an existing game mode and just paste it onto it I want to look at yeah. what can be done in the game mode and come up with an idea for endless missions which is unique to the experience of a 3D environment within the setting and the other thing is it even works for why it would be endless that the longer you stay there the more security they're going to be like oh wait our ships are every time people are blinking out we're getting messages about as a Tenno camping on this spot send in more security and it just keeps yeah. escalating as all the other missions do thus it works so well right moving on <sighs> Fixated targets. Lots of players are still complaining about frames that influence them or change their gameplay experience, such as Limbo's Rift, Limbo's Rift, or a surprising amount of hate for Vault Speed. What is your opinion on DE potentially implementing more control over public matchmaking for players, such as the exclusion or blacklist for Warframes, so that players don't get put into pub groups with those frames, or those frames can't join their public sessions? Is it worth considering, or do public players just need to accept that going public means you get the team members you get? The latter. I'm sorry, you shouldn't, like, if you're going public, then you, you've got three choices. One, hubbies, mm-hmm. where you've got, you, you, you've relinquished control. Two, pre-made group, where you've retained control and you've got to put the time in to make the team you want. Mm-hmm. Or three, you go solo and say, fuck, I don't want to play with other people. I don't think there's another option. Well, I've... you expand role to be a ability which is the cancellor, which it is for if you're stuck in the rift, you roll. So just add vault speed to that. You can cancel vault speed by rolling. But it, like I I don't not that I don't get what the problem is, but it's it's just is it that big a fucking deal? I don't know, no, no, but the but the people who experience it and they get annoyed by it are vocal, are, are some of the most vocal, that's why. This is intriguing. Anyway, yeah, keep going. As an experienced Excalibur player, what is Loz's opinions on how Excalibur can be improved to make him better under the current game's new settings, such as his Exalted Blade being able to take more advantage of the melee updates, his Radial Javelin being more functional, and his Slash Jash getting buffs? Further, once Loz has given his theories, what does Zero th- Zeno think of lo- what Loz thinks? Well, I can tell you Loz's uh, thoughts on this. He just wants Super Jump back. We're gonna take out. We're gonna take out Radio Javelin because there's some useless these days. We're gonna put in Super Jump. <laughs> yeah. We're then gonna take that's, out that's Slash Dash and put in Classic Slash. Dash. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thus, I have saved Excalibur. Radial Radio what Blind was, is good. What was the Skelter Blade is good. Dash. So it would just be a set dash forward, big distance. Uh, so in, now it pings between po- uh, enemies within the... Enemies, yeah. Yeah. So it basically... You, you get maybe two enemies now. It doesn't... It's supposed to be... <laughs> I think the point is supposed to be that it's supposed to be like, oh, it's really cool. He goes... And then the whole... Ching! Thing. I think yeah. that's what it's supposed to be. Instead, it's like, oh, I've reached one enemy. I've poked a second enemy. That's it. I'm out of time. That's how it feels now. Oh, wow. And you've got the sound effect. It's so useless. Compared to how it before, it was like, are you able to mod for it? Like, is it? Is it oh yeah, to- you can. You can. Well, you can mod it. It's got an augment as well. It doesn't do anything. <laughs> the augment, right? Every time you <laughs> to an enemy, gives you five combo counter. Wow. Default's only one. <laughs> wow. 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 
so bad. Yeah, so there we go. I think Xeno approves. Super jump. Yep. Give me super jump back. <laughs> I miss super jump, man. A super jump towards the end was really cool. You, you went invisible in air. It was cool because you'd yeah. reload, super jump, and you'd be safe while reloading. Perfect. <laughs> you could you could just get rid of the jumping section to make me invisible while reloading as ability, but who cares? No, no, I like the jumping bit. <laughs> Zrugal asks Before I read out Zrugal's question, I just wanted to ask our lovely audience to smash that like button and comment down below. I promise we read each and every comment. Of course we do. How often do you guys have to change servers to find emblems you like? I don't, you like? Oh, like? Oh, oh, oh. What does this like word here mean? No, let's, let's, no let's, it's, let's, it's let's... what you can get your grubby mitts on. That's <laughs> yeah. what it is for emblems. I'm like, it's, it's emblem! It's, <laughs> it's emblem! Constantly. It's constantly. It's, it's, it's... Oh, no emblems here. Next one. Yeah, it's just like, oh, no, no, get, no get away. Scrubs, here, get away. One. Where's an emblem? Where's an emblem? Scrubs, scrubs. No, no, no. Emblem! <laughs> so... <laughs> And it's like, so, and then I swear I see people moving because when you then want an emblem, you basically stand in their frame because you're trying to get the camera yeah. to see their shoulder. And I think people move because like, oh, someone's standing inside me. And then, <laughs> then you just follow them around trying to get the camera pose right. Yeah. So my, my emblem today was the only emblem I found in that relay. So oh. yeah, constantly. We have to change constantly. Yeah, I think I'm actually... I, I like find mine in the evening and I put myself to America. I don't just change server. I change which server time zone region. cluster I'm going, your yeah. region, to try and find yeah. emblems. Yep, that's it for those. Cool. So now let's move on to the community responses. Yep. yep. Joseph Grossnaber. I actually found a loosable mower corpse in one of the Jupiter starting tile sets. Nice. Because you know we're saying about you only find grenade corpses? Yep. That's, I didn't know you can get mowers. That's really cool. JJ24. Ah, yes, JJ24 did some good work here. I have come with data. I've solo tested eight nodes this week to see if void storms are worth doing. I'll start my conclusions and drop some of the data. So I won't go through everything because it's very involved. Showed is working yep. as well. Uh, they're working. I will leave yeah. graphs and raw entries in 10 o'clock in the channels and Discord. Right, so. Where was the key point as well? Something I said they wanted their... Ah, yeah, so these tests were all done with 10 trials per each node. Well done. It's a lot yeah. of work. It's a good thing. Good, yeah. good numbers. Right. Super conclusion. Loz is right. I shouldn't have to be doing such extensive analysis to prove that voice storms are okay. Voice storms should do two relics per player at the very minimum. It's very clear to see that two is greater than one. So the endo apparently is a very... It's, it's all right. It's good. And I, uh, the amount you get, and I assume actually that once you get to the point that you're also always breaking the scrap because you don't need any more for that, that you know, you got all your railjack mm. parts, it'll make it even better. So endo, it's okay. Credits are kind of bad with most runs only being about 40%. It's 40% worse than an index run, you know, for the time and things. So it's not very so good. Wait, for wait, wait. 40% worse, so worse. The 60% of an index and, uh, Yeah, run. an index run. Rough for time, okay. I think, on equivalence. And... Da, 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 da. So Flexer, which is Skirmish, I assume that's one particular node, seems to be about 50% of the rate of ESO for uh, Affinity, I think this one was. Uh, right. But they only tested that one five times. Skirmish can be faster when DE fixes the spawn system for Railjack, so it doesn't completely break down when players do multiple objectives at once. Affinity seems nice for Grenier, but the Corpus mission seems to be lacking in Affinity. I can't make any conclusions because I've only had time to test one node on that. Right. Uh, in my opinion, voice storms are worth it. Matchmaking and bugs are quite annoying, which are severe enough to make people not even want to play the thing. As a progression tool, voice storms would help out any mid-tier players max out their mods in addition to farming ducats and prime parts. It is possible to do multiple relics, as stated in the March dev stream. D just has to code a UI for it. Right now, I would not blame anyone for thinking voice storms aren't worth it. If you did not need endo credits and relics, you could very well spend your time elsewhere with lesser... Oh, but compare... Well, comparable games. Yeah, so, so it's, it's okay. And I think that's, that's how it feels. It doesn't feel the... I feel it should be the superior method. I think it's okay as a method. Yeah, I think one thing I want to highlight, because before last week I said I'd never touched voice storm. Since then, I have. I will say that the one thing that has uh, that voice storms have going for it is the fact that it's engaging. Whereas yeah. a lot of systems, you know, like the corporate site, the Grenier Railjack, a lot of it feels like you're just sat around waiting and stuff. At least with the corpus Railjack and the thus voice storms, they're actually really engaging. Cool. 
Stromba Shell, I don't always comment, but I do listen, and I just want to say you guys have a great show, and I appreciate you guys. Thank you very much, Stromba Shell. Right. Uh, King of Gaming, I can remember the specifics, but I, I believe the original is an astronaut saying Moon's Haunted is, you know, the Void Haunted thing. And yeah, I actually looked it up. It was originally a, a meme joke tweet that someone did of Moon's Haunted, and then it got a lot of appeal because Destiny 2 picked it up and did some just for it. So yeah, so we've got our own now with Void Haunted. Yeah. And lastly, he's Rugal. Uh, on the topic of number of relics, I've kept a spreadsheet while I was making a concerted effort to crack as many relics as I could daily. I was lucky if I could get the number to go down by 50 in a day, usually more like 20. But if I stopped cracking for even just a day, I would go up by 30 to 50. Unless you're doing it exclusively and nothing else, you will never open those relics. And at 2,000 relics, even if you get the number to go down by 50 a day, that's over a month of time sunk into nothing but relic cracking. If you can only get it to go down by 20, that's over three months. And that assumes you're doing it every day. It's kind of crazy. Fucking hell. Yeah. So our ability to gain relics is just so crazy for our ability to actually consume them to this point. Yeah, we... we they, they, at some point, that needs to be addressed. There's only Wait, more we, relics coming every three months. Can we, can we actually get, like, more void traces then, please? Yeah. Right? Can we, can we have the soft cap lock? Can we just crush traces? relics for pure void traces? Done! That's an amazing idea! Yeah! Just fucking, oh my god. Blender, blender, blender. Yeah. Hey, you could even give it a random amount. It's like that was the give you ten, that gave fifty. I don't know. Just just let's smash them. I no, I, I would stick with a fixed amount. I wouldn't fixed I wouldn't amount, yeah, fine, fine, fixed amount, that's fine. Yeah, but still anyway, just let us smash them. <laughs> just Hold Yeah, on. just, just... Wait, this is a question. Would you uh like to smash um relics for void traces? <laughs> I bet everyone's gonna put no to begin with, and then they get to that uh, the point that Zrugal's made. And this is like, oh, let me change that to a yes. Now, obviously, we're not saying about the amount. That can be debatable. I mean, we're not, I mean I'm not yeah. saying if there should be like 100 for each one or 50 for each one or 20 or 10, but just the concept alone. The yeah. number can be played with, you know, fiddled up down. Would you be okay with that? You'd smash a relic, you get more void traces. You want to upgrade. Yeah. Right, that's it for the replies. Cool. Now we... Something, something... Mems. Memes. 159. Right. Oh, crap. I forgot to actually get these up. Yep. Yeah. Uh, it's the first one. I'm glad you're back. Are you two friends? <laughs> yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. Do you remember uh, this episode? I don't. Is that the episode where Tuvok, through the holodeck, communicates to a poor lady who's looking after an entire like super nebula from exploding, and so is looking yeah. for friends, and so contacts and yeah. reaches out to Tuvok on the. Yeah. No, it's it's Kim. It's Harry Kim first. Yeah, but it's Tuvok and, in the end because um, she's more attracted to Tuvok because yeah. he's like you know. And then Kim gets like super jealous and then like get all super angry. Kim does nothing yeah. but super jealous. <laughs> you know, for apparently the they were going to actually kick, kill T Kim off at one point. Really? Yeah, apparently. I think it was though the actor was in some sort of top 50 sexiest men on the planet or most attractive men on the planet or something in between right. seasons. And so they were like, hmm, oh well, we'll keep him. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Even though, I mean, Voyage, Voyage, they're talking about Starship Voyage all of a sudden, like, there was a lot of stuff towards the end of the show that, that people were annoyed about. Like, uh, Tuvok, I think a little bit of Tuvok, but Chakotay was definitely annoyed that his character was just completely sidelined. He had no plot points towards the end of the season. It was all basically I... either a Seven of Nine episode, a Janeway episode, a Doctor episode, no, or maybe a Neelix episode. No, not even that, not a Neelix. I think like the the most of the episodes boil down to a uh, Janeway and Janeway um, seven of nine Doctor season five, was like the five worst six seven. That. Yeah, yeah. Uh, six and seven got a lot better, but also like, um, sorry, Star Trek nerd shit. <laughs> um, but I heard that part of the reason why Jacote got sidelined was because he had a drinking problem. Oh, I, I don't know. The, anyway. 
Uh, okay. Number two. Yeah, from one fandom to another. What the? <laughs> I can assume you all team kills in a radiation hazard sortie are 100% unintentional. After all, why not? Why shouldn't I kill my teammates? <laughs> oh my god, is that Bilbo? Yes, it's Bilbo. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I like this one a lot. Okay, moving number three. Three. <laughs> Please buff Hydroid. <laughs> Warframe players, you are without a doubt the worst pirates I've ever heard of. Hydroid. <laughs> but you have heard of me. <laughs> oh, it's awesome. Uh, yeah. Meme number four. What's happening with my right here? I can't. Okay. Uh, OP Scarlet Spear was awesome to honest. Also, Boomer Ruck. Ha 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 ha. I don't know what anime this is from. Sentience. Jojo. It's, it's Jojo. It's fucking Jojo, Loz. I found a Jojo me. Sentience of Faith threatening all life in the Oregon system. Sagra Shruck. I'll never forgive the Tenno. Um, so the... No, 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 it's fine. I, I've got to watch Jojo myself. I will enjoy the meme when it turns up randomly. Do not let me know. Bastard. Bastard. Five. Bastard. Oh, God. <laughs> Number five. Yep, ready? Yeah. 9.22 million, million, million kills. <laughs> Reactant collected, oh. three of ten. Eliminate targets. Zero out of 9.223372e to the power 18. What the fuck game? <laughs> Get on killing all those grenades. <laughs> I don't know. Want them all done by oh. Tuesday. Oh my god. <laughs> yep. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> and the last one. Let's have a future armor meme. Oh, damn straight. You know, I'm watching this again. I'm watching it again <laughs> this week. DE when making Call of the Tempestari. Players. There's nothing else here. You've only written two missions, DE. Well, it took an hour to write. I thought it would take an hour to play. <laughs> and we do like the call to Poseidon. I don't know what I mean about it. It's just funny. <laughs> well, the other thing is, like, I feel like I can relate to this so much. It's like, because I keep, you know, I write a script and I'm like, Ah, oh, yes. This is going to be epic and monolithic in length. And it's like two seconds later. Well, shit. <laughs> okay. Let's move on to the shout outs. Yeah. Oh, shout -out. Shout -out number well, one. First creative shout out. I need to write down the time laws. You're jumping the gun here. Ah, uh, right. So, what, what are we? Uh, 203. Well, it means we will get to look at this amazing artwork for longer. Okay, I don't so see that as a negative. Our, our first community shout out is this lovely Valban portrait by, sorry, Boobin portrait by D3M1. Mm. So I think they, someone had run a, a, won a raffle and thus uh, this was done. And I, yeah, I thought it was pretty damn cool. That's pretty cool. Pretty damn cool. Mm -hmm. Our next community shout out is No Heart. Is sorry, no heart. This golden gen, yeah, no heart. This golden gentleman won't conquer by Joriel. Nimmer right. Prime and his Prime hat are coming for you. Oh, yeah, that is cool. <laughs> yeah, that's number yeah. Th two. two now. Three, so now we have Titania Prime by Triple Take. Ooh. Yeah. Oh. I'm not quite sure if we've had this one on. We get to a point where it's just like, I don't know, they could be reposting this, and it's really hard to tell if this has been on. Hey, if we see it again, that's not bad because that's really cool. Yeah. Number four is Mirage Prime by Ooh. Kosh A. This is where I feel Kosh we've seen this not in color or something, yeah, but that, that's so cool. Yep. Number five is My Feral Boy by <laughs> Orb. That's... I love this one. This is this good. This is good. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. um, oh, that one's wrong. Oh. That one is wrong. Pause. Uh, yeah. 
Right. This is the prop in number six, which is Oberon by uh, Eon Height. Ooh. I like this one a lot. Are those the butterfly wings, or is? Yeah, I think it's supposed to be the butterfly wings, and right. it's just really nice that they've kind of like folded over, like a cape. sort of like. I-, I was actually thinking more like a coat because this is uh, like the front of him. Yeah. Or a cape. <laughs> I suppose. Right. That wrong. is that is that is a the real nice result. Work. So. Yes. And, uh, in the mouth. So that is it for the memes and the community shoutouts. Though I'm going to announce that I still am going to maintain as I promised last week. So all of our memes came from the r slash meme frame subreddit, and I'll now be adding the secret meme of the week, which is in the description below. So please click on that link and go to r slash meme frame subreddit to check out some other Warframe memes, including the one I have found for you again this week. Nobody mentioned it in the comments, but I don't know if people are clicking it, but just it's yet again another reason, along with the platinum, to go and discover all those stuff we hide in that description below. There we go. Yep. Right. So that's it for the shout outs. Is that it? What else we have to do? Yeah, we got just a quote. Just that's a it. quote. Yeah. Right. Let's finish off this episode then. Right. I have my quote. Are you ready, Zeno? Yes. Grenier power is a myth. Great show. There are no spare parts. Nothing is working. Nothing. It's nothing but painted rust. But you, you need to keep the Grenier myth alive to maintain your terno terroristic balance your system depends on grenier being perceived as a mortal threat it's not a threat it was never a threat it will never be a threat it's a rotted bloated kubro spy film from 2006 maybe some effort oh my god do you know if i've seen this i have not <laughs> okay 2006 oh, uni that's all i remember <laughs> Um, do it again. Grenier power is a myth. Great show. There are no spare parts. Nothing is working. Nothing. It's nothing but painted rust. But you, you need to keep the Grenier myth alive to maintain your Tenno terroristic balance. Your system depends on Grenier being perceived as a moral threat. It's not a threat. It was never a threat. It will never be a threat. It's a rotted, bloated Kubro. Two thousand and six. I, I don't know if you've seen it. You know, these days with these quotes, I just you got to find something. It's, well, I'm I'm gonna assume it's not a Mission Impossible movie. No, 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 no. Um, it doesn't sound like Man from Uncle because I'm, nope. I'm pretty sure Man from Uncle is later than that. A lot later than that. Um, God, I wish they would do a sequel to that. I love Man from Uncle. I haven't seen it. I really should. Oh, what? It's really good. <laughs> really, really good movie. Um, I, I, I feel like I recognize this. I don't know. It's, it's it? not. It's The Good Shepherd. Oh, okay. oh I haven't got a fucking clue now. Never seen Soviet that. power is a myth. Great show. There are no spare parts. Nothing's working. Nothing. It's nothing but painted rust. But you need to keep the Russian myth alive to maintain your military industrial complex. Your system depends on Russian being dispensed. Uh, being perceived moral threat. It's not a threat. It's n- never a threat. It'll never be a threat. It's a rotted, bloated cow. Right. Mm-hmm. It was really cool. Yeah, damn. Was there really, we go. Really good one. Right. That's it. So let okay. us sign off this. Well, <laughs> we, know, we know only do the sign off when the actual, <laughs> you know, really broken mess that it is. Uh, oh. Thank you so much for service unavailable. You are just such a good supporter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's it for this episode. Thank you very much, everyone, for listening. If you fancy becoming part of Service Unavailable, Consider going to Service Unavailable and pledging to, uh, which got you know a mere one dollar Service Unavailable to help support Service Unavailable. All money goes to <laughs> Service Unavailable, and all money donated to Service yeah, Unavailable will go to towards making Service, service Available at some point to the its convenience. <laughs> God damn it! I hate email so much. The whole reason the service down is because of sodding email. Right. Anyway, right. Yep. So that's it. Thank you very much for listening, and we will see you all next week. Bye bye.